ladies love the skin. Ow. Bring it a little bit closer. The good skin that is. <laughs> That's why having a proper skincare routine is very important and you need to fill it to each. The process is so easy, just four steps. You got your daily face wash. That's gonna clean your face up nice and right. You got your exfoliator scrub. That's gonna open up your pores. You got your AM moisturizer with the SPM 20, which is gonna protect you from the sun. You also got your PM moisturizer, which is gonna make sure your skin is protected throughout the night. Tej has tons of reviews from dedicated customers across the world. I know I said a lot, but it's okay, because guess what? It comes with an instruction card to explain to you in detail what to do morning and night. And because Tej is sponsoring this video, they're offering you an amazing deal. Just click the first link in the description to get 30% off your first skincare system and a free gift. Plus, as a member, you'll also get 20% off for life. By the way, both gifts you're choosing from are a $20 value and a complete game changer a silicone body scrubber, or a nail and face grooming kit. Personally, I prefer the silicone body scrubber. I don't like using towels when I travel, so the body scrubber is an excellent way to open up the pores and get the body clean. So don't wait any longer. Click the first link in the description to start your skincare journey today. Maintaining your beard isn't just style, it's self-respect. A well-grown beard boosts confidence and leaves a lasting impression. Elevate your look. Embrace the importance of beard care today. So, ma'am, okay. according, yeah, like according to what you're saying, the facts, the data, the statistics call bullshit. That's okay. number one. So, number one. I, 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 number two. If black men aren't capable of leading or doing anything, then don't say jack shit when he gets a white woman. Because you did. must be saying he's an inferior leader. Yeah, I don't never worry did. about I it when Maria okay. comes along. Be, be, I, okay, I let I didn't interrupt what you were saying. I'm just saying, fifty four percent of black men are single and childless. Sixty one percent in the middle class. The average black man earns 42000 The average white man earns 51000 There is more than $9,000 difference between how the average white woman treats the average black man. But all we hear from black women is, you ain't proven to us that you should be leading in this. You ain't that, that. And the numbers say wrong. 2.5 million black men in the upper class. Y'all aren't following nobody. Black or other. So if you don't want to follow black men because they haven't proven to you, why have, do you have anything to say when Maria, Marisol, Myling, or Becky gets with the black men who ain't proven nothing to you? Yeah, I don't, I don't really care about black men dating outside of their race. I feel like you could go do whatever you deem responsible for yourself or whatever makes you happy. But my only issue with that is when you come back in bash. So here's the thing. I don't date outside my race. I just don't. I don't care how much strife and struggle we go through with black men. There, I'm just not. That's just not my forte. I believe that. Black I, I just want to. I just want to change one point. I just want to change one okay. point, and I'll back up. I'm not talking about dating. I'm talking about marriage. Oh well, see, that's the thing. Is it? I, everybody wishes that they could be married, but men are the one who ones who propose. We're not like. You think we don't try to be married? We yeah, put in all okay. of the. I don't know if you watch my content. I don't know if you watch my content, ma'am. I don't know if you watch my content, but I don't, oh, really I don't do. know if you watch. My, but but what you're saying is we've heard it for 18 months. You don't try. You don't stay. 56 percent divorce rate in the black community and 80 percent of those divorce actions are initiated by women. Because we're getting abused a lot. I mean, you know even that? if I see, and see, this is guys. <laughs> and what I need you guys to understand, this is the same shit. That's been, so offense, man. This is the same propaganda that's been pushed into the black community for my entire life. It doesn't hold up, ma'am. Even if I said half of the divorce filings were for the worst treatment, that would still mean four out of 10 divorces filed for what? Irreconcilable differences, I'm not happy. It just doesn't stand up to the numbers. And, and, what you, what, and black men get tired of hearing women like yourself with these things, basically painting the worst black men. You take whatever traumas that you may have survived and you paint us all with one brush 
No, 54% of black men, single and childless, fully 16% of black men are responsible for 80% of the kids. And you'd say black men do this. No, the black men you fucking make babies with do fuck shit. Okay, so where are the rest of them? Not getting fucked and married, not getting fucked, not getting married until you have already fucked up your life. Then you want us to come tutor your kids. No, not all of That's us. That's what they are. Um, okay, so. That's um, what they are. You don't want to marry the, the, the squares, the lames and everything else until you done shit out Pookie and Ray Ray's bastard ass kids. No, see, listen. And then y'all also think that being the nice guys, that, that's the bare minimum. Being a nice person is what you should be. They always say the nice well, guys. Well, then, look, if that's the bare minimum, what your, if that's the bare minimum, oh, what you, you, if that's that the bare men. minimum, what, if that's the bare minimum, what is the 16% of these dudes making 80% of the kids? Well, that if has to be. Being a nice guy is the bare minimum. That's what are they? Data. But go ahead. If the 16% so, who are making 80% of the kids, they're beneath the guys who are doing the bare minimum. Where are they? See, you what you what we do in this community, and it's being shown. That's why I'm saying I'm so glad there are more black channels opening up with more black people having a conversation, men and women. And women are actively talking about, yeah, we say we want the nice guy, but we really want Tupac in the suit. We want Clark Kent and Superman to all be the same dude. And we only come to this realization after we've evacuated our womb with somebody else's kids. We don't get we don't come to this realization when we're young childless and able to be worked with we come to you with issues drama trauma and you expect the guy who didn't make those babies to stand in the gap with you and if you don't he's a sellout bullshit um so i mean i'm always say something about this 16 to 80 thing like they make up these numbers. I'm, I think that's not necessarily. I don't think that's verified. I don't at care all. if it's. I don't care if it's. It's precise. The problem I mean, is thirty percent of black men are married, fifty four percent of single and childless. We do know that in Memphis, three men had eighty seven children. We do know that. We know that's more. Anybody? Most men don't have most. What we do know is the things we hear talked about on the panels aren't the men you see every day walking around. No. They're, the, they're, the, they're the outliers. They're not the norm. They're not 51% of black men. So, um, mm -hmm. Kevin, can Jonathan... I think Jonathan had something to say to you real quick or respond to you? somebody. No, I, just, I was just going to say, like, I, I think you there, something, Jonathan. You know, I think okay. there's a lot of tropes about black men and understandings about, like, this I have idea of patriarchy that, that aren't true. And I think one of the key the key points, at least like over here in like academia that we talk about all the time, it's just that black people need to come up with new terms and new ideas and new understandings that look at their own experience instead of adopting these other understandings that are not for us to begin with. So like, for yeah, example, don't so example, for example, when we talk about patriarchy, black men specifically in the United States, it doesn't necessarily apply because we because when we got here we weren't considered human. Then after that we were considered boys. Then after that we were considered super predators. Then at, now we're considered Pookie and Ray Ray. So there's right. never been a point in the in the history of the U.S. where we've been considered men in this in this context other than other than manhood being self affirmed. That's why you had men in the '60s with signs saying "I am a man." Right. Because we had to affirm that for ourselves. So this idea that we're sitting up trying to be like white men or like trying to oppress women. Uh, and then in sociology, when we talk about patriarchy as well, one of the key components of patriarchy is actually protecting the women of your group. And so if there are men raping women, if there are men abusing women, yes, that actually do. goes against the ideals of patriarchy as defined by the term. Right. So so like exactly. those are some of the things that we're talking about. Now, I'm not saying that like dudes don't abuse women because they do. We know that. I'm not saying that dudes don't need to work on themselves because they do. We know that. But we need to come up with more terms and more ways of understanding black men than just what we've been what we've been taught. And that's like my, my that's the only point I have. Yeah, I'm Jonathan, to that because I have two sons. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like I look at all black men and I'm like, rah, rah. Yeah, I'm not saying you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying?
It's go time. What's going on, family? Welcome to King Talk. Let me go ahead and introduce the crew. We got Mr. Shannon Rawls, Sweeney, Trev Smooth, Darwin, Chicago Rilla, M. White, Kenny P., Hank, me, myself. I'm Black Peep J.R. Welcome to King Talk. What's going on, gentlemen? What's going on? How y'all doing? Peace, everyone. Peace, peace. What's up? What's up? What's happening? Another day How's it going? There. How's it going? Another day in the paradise. Feels good. It's Tuesday. It's some people's favorite day. I know it's really favorite day. I like that hat, man. Yeah, so salute, salute. That's the leaders edition, huh? Already. Trying uh, to get like I ain't trying to get like me. What's that? Snapback? Nah, you got all uh, you know, yeah, you know you do the snapbacks. <laughs> style, man. That's your style. Right? I need that 75 8. Yeah, okay. Now you go ahead and keep on uh keeping them uh them. Straight arounds, man. Still over there. Anyhow, man, good to see you guys. Welcome to King. Let me go ahead and get the housekeeping out the way. Uh, shout out to the sponsor, T. Shelly, Uncomplicated Skin Care for Men. 30% off along with a free gift. That link is in the description. And if you become a member, you get 20% off for life. That link is in the description. Shout out to Sugar Curls as well. King on top. Uh, me and her collab to bring you guys a phenomenal beard product. It's also skin friendly as well. So y'all make sure y'all click that link and go ahead and get your beard right. Father's Day should be approaching soon, and I've been saying it, but I think we're getting closer. It's at April, right? May? We're getting there. June. June. June? Okay. <laughs> Taking a long time, man. But anyhow, it'd be an excellent gift. Go ahead and get ahead. Get ahead. Uh, get ahead. Get it packed up and get it ready for it, man. Show your appreciation in multiple ways. And assured, man, there's one way you can do it. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat, Dale Matthew, Angela Swift, Richarda, Reeves, we got Bethany, we got Soldier, Soldier Saurock. Hope I said that correctly. If not, I, my apologies. We also got some of the men in the chat as well. Golden Pisces, salute to the chat. If you want to become part of Green Game, that link is in the description as well. We're going to go ahead and hop right into it. Do me a favor, hit that like button, and also make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also, just go ahead and share the stream. Share the stream. It's still early, and we got a few topics to get through, and I think it's going to be amazing because we're going to end it with a bang on this one. Our first topic of the night, our first topic of the night, what is a healthy space? I'm going to go ahead and play this clip, and we'll get into it. It's always is literally, I want to get away from you. I said, okay, if you want space from me, you could take space away from me in small ways. Like, we don't have to watch TV on the same couch all the time. Every time we're in the house and I'm not doing nothing and you're not doing nothing, we don't have to be together. Take your space. But if she come to me and say, hey, we need space, then I'm gonna ask, okay, well, why do you feel like you need space? And what type of space are you talking about? Because if you really need space, we can move the furniture around. We can move the furniture around. <laughs> but I need to know, like, what you mean when you need one space? Do you need time away from me because you feel like you're losing your identity? Do you need time away from me because you need to figure things out? And we had to figure out why you want space first before it's just like, yo, go take your space. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go to Trey Smooth first and just answer that question. What is a healthy space for you? All right, well, um, just for me, uh, I kind of create my own space just with work, right? Um, I, I'm so, I guess, addicted to work that creates enough space. Um, when I do get time, around my spouse, then, you know, I try to enjoy it best I can. But fortunately, we both have the same kind of habits where she might be doing something, I might be doing something, we bring our time together. Uh, I think the most important thing to take into consideration is finding a person that can match your energy. If you were a person that likes to be all hugged up and with each other all day, every day, then you you have to find you have to find a person that matches that right you can't be a person who just knows how to self soothe and and work alone and just be super independent and then get with the person who is dependent on your every move who doesn't have any outside social group who doesn't really have a bunch of friends and then they just want you to provide them with 
all your energy and you can't provide that for them. I think that's the biggest mistake that we make. Second mistake is just not coming into the relationship with what you really are or behaving like you really are. I think if you court a certain way, you setting yourself up, uh, you just kind of have to be yourself going into a relationship. A lot of us come in with these habits and and then we switch up. We get comfortable outside of that six month honeymoon. Then all of a sudden now the real you comes out and it's a surprise. And now I have to deal with that. So your main thing, and it's important to communicate that a lot of us don't articulate how we feel like I, I don't really pull any punches, man. I'm going to go ahead and tell you exactly what my expectations are of you, what I need and what, I, what, what I'm willing to do. If you go into a relationship and that's not what your game is, then you're going to have serious problems. A lot of us try to impress each other. I think that's the worst thing you could really try to do is impress a person. You just come out as yourself and stop coming into a relationship as a character because you're not going to be able to hold that character for that long. So that's that's our biggest mistakes we make is just not being forthcoming. And that's how we wind up into these messy situations when you really can't stand a person because that wasn't the person that you met in the beginning. And you were in a relationship with their repre representative. That's who you fell in love with. And now I got to deal with this cat. And I don't really like this cat. They're not the same person that I met. So that, that right there is what I think um, we could eliminate that problem in the first place. Because people pretty much have a good idea of who they are. It's just that they are unwilling to present who they actually are in the beginning of a relationship. I'll end it there. All right, Dar, I'm going to come to you. If your wife comes to you and says she needs some space, how are you responding to that? First of all, I'm just say why. But I mean, if 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 she's if, what I'm gonna think is we probably going through some issues or we disconnected in some kind of way where she probably needs to think about whether or not she wanna consider moving forward in a relationship or moving, continuing in a relationship. Somebody come to me talking about they need space. My experience, uh, not that it happened to me before, but from what I've heard and speaking to other people, and that means that there's a serious problem. And the only way they'd be able to get over the hump is take some time away from you. Which is, which is a bad thing to me because if we're in a relationship, it's important for us to be able to get over the hump together. And when you get to a point where you got to go make, you got to go away from me, I can't be included in the, the journey to get over the hump. That means, it, that means this relationship is fragile. You get what I mean? So, I mean, if, I mean, for me, getting for me having uh space is important not because of an issue in a relationship or anything like that but just i like to be around male energy sometimes playing basketball with the fellas you know video games uh bowling shooting pool playing space stuff like that uh you know just so that i don't you know get intoxicated from the female sensitivity you know, it's just it's just a lot to, to deal with whenever you're an emotional shoulder to lean on the entire time when you're around a female. So also it strikes that uh, sexual. Uh, it makes you miss her a little bit. If you get away from your woman for a while, you, you might find that, you know, what I'm saying the sex is better whenever you spend a couple of days away or whatever. You go on a trip and you come back and, you know, what I'm saying you start missing her then being up under her shoulder all the time. Well, I know a lot of y'all got living girlfriends and living wives, so y'all might not be able to get away, but try it. You'll see what I'm saying. Mm. Okay. All right, I'm going to go to you, Kenny P. Uh, sometimes when a woman comes to you and she says she needs space and you questioning her and asking her and trying to get to the root of the problem, she may look at that as being controlling. Do you agree? As, as though you're trying to stop her from from doing what it is that she wants to do. Nah, that's a conversation. It's funny that uh, you touched on Kevin Samuels. It's been a minute since I looked at um, one of his uh, panel talks. He always says something, trade-offs and compromises. A conversation to give you a clear indication of what's going on. You should be able to know your lady if you're, you're with your lady. 
you'll be able to tell what's off just like she's able to tell what's off. And the conversation that many don't have, they just brush it off, then leads to more complications down the road. I can't see anyone at your hip every day, 24-7, 365. That, that'll never work. Everybody needs a little room. Everybody might need some space because they need something to work out within the moans, within their own selves, even though that they have a partner. People need time to step back, recollect, you know, unwind. Suppose you have kids and your lady wants some time and you have to take the kids and she doesn't know how to express it to you because you're not conversationalist. You're doomed to fail. That's one caveat of it, but everybody needs some time. It's trade-offs and compromises. Nothing is perfect, but within communication, we can find common ground. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, you, Marcus. What are your thoughts about it? What's a healthy space for you, brother? And uh, just feel free to chime in on what the gentleman has been saying and what the videos have to say. Damn, I forgot what the video was. Um, it's about a healthy space. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think so. Right now, if if uh, my wife came to me and said she needed space, I would think one of the kids hit her with a dirty pamper or something. Some got too much. Like <laughs> these kids, they they be extra. Took the pamper off while she was napping or something, and dropped it on her face, and she's like, "Oh my god, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this." And then she's just like, I, "I just need a moment. I just need a moment." And I can understand that because they didn't got me before. You know what I'm saying? They hopped in the bed. I got peed on last week. She jumped in the bed, slept in there, pee, and then I woke up, my whole shirt soaked. Why? So yeah, for real. It'd be, it'd be, if you ain't got kids, you don't understand what I'm saying, but I got babies, like little babies. So this is stuff that happens, right? Um, that That's really the only thing I, I, I honestly could think of her saying she needs space for, but I'm not in the business to hold nobody hostage. So if she ever need to, to, to go do something, she, she more than free to go do it. I, um, if you if you if you talking about in the context of she needs space from me, I don't know how I would take that because that that to me kind of sound like you want a separation. You know what I'm saying? Like you need space from me. Oh, OK, don't even worry. You can get all the space you want. I'll be at the club this whole week with some shit like that. So like, <laughs> you petty. I'm just saying that's that's how I would look at it. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even gonna lie, like, oh, okay, shit, go ahead. I'll be outside. Yeah, you definitely from the west side. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be outside. Like, shit, with the kids, I understand. You talking about you just need to get away from me. Well, like, I, I don't know. I ain't never really experienced that outside of, like, I did something. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you got caught cheating a whole lot of times. Now she's like, I just need space to heal. Outside of that, I can't really see that shit happening. But. Yeah, that's my answer. Okay, go ahead, Rilla. What thoughts about it? What is a healthy space? Um, I think a healthy space is the uh, space that you create for yourself. I mean, a lot of times it looks like boundaries. You know what I mean? Um, it's the space where you can uh, breathe, fully express yourself with impunity. You know what I'm saying? Um, and be yourself. And listen, we're all autonomous human beings. We grown. So I'm not a, 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 a Siamese twin with my wife. She may need that space. I could go get your space. If you need space, go get your space the same way I need mine at times, right? Sometimes I need my space to decompress or reflect or journal. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's always like a, a, a three alarm fire, you know? Now, if it was a conversation uh, to Marcus' point, like, uh, like you need space for me. Like you specifically saying me, <laughs> yeah, because we ain't got kids. I don't have kids with my wife, but yeah, that's that that looks different. But uh, you know, again, I think it's I think it's good for people to have a, a area where they can retreat and they can reflect. I think introspection is very very important. Um, and I think yeah, but really, hey. say she said that. Say she said I want space from you. What's your oh, response? Listen. Listen, I'm I, I'll be fifty, bro. I'm I'm same as Marcus. I'm not in the business of chasing anybody. I mean, we can work through it, pimp past that, right? Because again, the first thing I asked her when we when we before we even got into this relationship, this deep shan, I said, "What do you? What's gonna happen when you don't love me anymore?" Right? 
And then she was like, uh, I don't know. What what am I doing? Well, you know, what yeah, we're gonna figure this shit out. You ain't going nowhere, I ain't going nowhere, right? That's the conversation. But again, if this is if it's a conversation of you need space from me, I don't, you know, to be honest, I don't know what that uh fully what that conversation fully looked like because it's easy to say what 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 could possibly happen or what I would do here. I just I haven't we've been together eight years. I have I don't even see that on the horizon where it's like, you know, I need space from you. It may be we need to talk and then we hash that out because, again, we're both adults. Right. Um, so that communication, like we often talk about here, is key. Um, but again, well, like I say, what, what happens when you don't love me? Figure that shit out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Figure that shit out. If I ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. But I am going on mute. <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead, Shan. What is healthy space? What What happens if my woman says I need some space and I need space from you, Shan? I wish I knew this two marriages and two divorces ago. Marcus and Rilla has it right. The answer is gone. Go ahead. Take as much as you want. Take it, baby. See, two marriages ago, I would have been like, what the fuck are you talking about? You need space for me. What I no, that would have been a we, we go, hold, hold, no, no, we're gonna talk about this. Don't no, fuck that party. We ain't gotta go sit down. Let's talk. Let's we we we, we gonna sit in the, that's what I would have did before, twice. And now my wisdom. And time and service and understanding, which is a little too late, uh, would have said, oh, baby, yes, I understand. Take it and take as long as you need. Just don't embarrass me. Don't defile our bed and don't disrespect our family. And how much money you need? And where you want to go? Go. Check in with me every once in a while. I didn't know that then. I wish I would have known that. Um, because if a woman says she needed space for me, cause I'm a lot and a lot of men have to realize that they are a lot and to adjust to a whole nother human being to cohabitate with them can be a lot for somebody to do. Go do what you need to do. Do y'all remember two years ago, uh, Willie Taylor, the singer, he was part of that boy group, uh, day 26 from making a band. Remember when he took space? From his wife, he went to the he went to Arizona mountains for four days, and the internet ate his ass up because his wife went. I did a whole show on it. His his wife went on there. He left me with these four kids. Blah blah blah. Everybody ate it, and he said, "Damn, I just wanted to. I just needed some space. I got a lot going on, and that's what he needed." And I and I went in then. I was like, "Y'all, let the brother go decompress." He went to the mountains in Arizona, uh, into the desert to just chill. He didn't go smash nobody. He didn't take no new girlfriend. He just wanted to get the fuck away for a second. He covers his whole family. She pays no bills and he just needed a break. And he was gone for two days or something like that. And now they're back together and everything is fine. I didn't know that when I was married, I would have, that would have been a problem. But today I would say, take as much time as you need. If a woman told me she needed space, especially for me, you know, I wish more men had the courage that Trev has. Trev sounds like he's in an extremely healthy marriage. Because Trev is one of the things that I hear him consistently say is tell your expectations up front and be forthcoming. There's so many men that's afraid to talk to their wife and or girlfriend because they don't want to lose the pussy. Man, do what Trev is telling y'all. Tell this is what it is. Be up front, be forthcoming and. Let the chips fall where they may. And then when you and if a woman needs to take that space, give it to her. Darwin was right, too. He said, you, you'd be surprised. Absence makes the heart grow strong, uh, fonder, I think is how the phrase goes. You, you know, you, you give your woman some space. You fuck around. You be missing her. You be ready to fuck the shit out of her when she come back or she'd be ready to fuck the shit out of you when she come back. You know, even Patrice O'Neill, you got seen a clip a long time ago where he was like, we. Ladies, we 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 want you just around. We don't you don't got to be all up under me. I'm watching the game. 
I just want you in that. You just be somewhere in the other room or something. But you ain't got to be all up under me. You know, and I said it on the show about two years ago, and I'll wrap it with this. I think it's completely okay for men, for a husband and wife to have two completely separate bedrooms and under the same roof. Whatever works for your marriage, let it work for your marriage. Sometimes I snore. And that can be hard for women. You know, I don't have a CPAP machine and I haven't really got it taken a look at. This is something that I developed in the army. So I, today I have sleep apnea, you know, but if I'm with a woman and she's like, yo, the house is, I got a whole, listen, I got a man cave. I think every man should have a man cave. I'll sleep over there. We can watch movies and we can fuck and all that. But around one o'clock, I'm going to get up and go to the man cave and sleep there. And I'll meet you in the morning for breakfast. I think that's completely healthy. And I think a lot of people should consider that. But some that are immature in their marriage will think that it's something wrong with me. You don't want to sleep with me. You don't want to talk to me. It's not that, man. Ed, there's autonomy between every individual. And some people just need to adjust. And you can create a lot of contention in your relationship if you don't give space to your man, ladies and fellas. You don't give space to your woman. So if a woman was to say that she needed some healthy space and she needed to get away from me, go take as much as you need and go wherever you need to go. That's what I believe. All right. Where, well, Brother Hink? Brother, what was the question again? I apologize. Question is, what is a healthy space? Mm. Uh, the video, the video that I played, um, it was Duke. So I guess his wife came up to him and said that she needed space. Or maybe I don't know if it was his wife, but they was having a discussion, and a woman comes up and says she needs space. And he was kind of confused, like, "What type of space is this? What type of space do you need?" So what? And he was just talking about a healthy space to go to when you need that space. So let me let me say this uh healthy space. Uh I don't believe healthy space is for you to go get a hotel room, uh you to be spending the night over your mama's house or your friend's house. I don't think that's the healthy space. Uh like Shan said, I I have multiple rooms in my home. You got four bedrooms to choose from. To lay your head. All of them has beds. Televisions. Table service. Wi-Fi all over. You can go any room you need to. Multiple, two bathrooms. Four bathrooms. They won't be a problem. You can get the space in another room. I'll take my room. That's fine. But what we, you're not going to do is somebody. Yeah, I'm going to go get a hotel. No, we're not. Reason why? Because I know. Ladies are emotional. And when you act out on your emotions, you can go out there and do some emotion you might regret later on. You may go to the bar and, and, and have a, a conversation under the influence of that, that, that liquor. And share some things that you don't need to be sharing. And you don't know who I know. And then also to get back to me. But that's not going to be good for you, lady. It's not going to be good for you, man. That's going to be a problem. So I'm I'm all for healthy space. You know, you need some time in that other room. You know, take your time, and then we can come back and we we could have a conversation. I mean, I'm I'm all for a table and a conversation. If we feel like we're not getting nowhere, we could table it, even if that means till tomorrow. So be it. But now we're going to eventually need to come back and address it because we got to get this thing resolved. We're not going to keep sweeping it on the rug or kicking a can down the road. That's not going to help us. But what we're not going to do, we're not going to involve your whole clan, friends, family, and loved ones. No, we're not doing that. Whatever we're going on between us is us two. So we're going to have to find some way, somehow, to figure this shit out. Now, if we need to get a counselor, a third party, then so be it. I'm all for it. But like I said, none of your comrades going to be involved, and they shouldn't have no idea what's going on, unless I'm doing something to hurt you, harm you, or abuse you. And if I'm not doing none of those things, why they involve? So your space needs to be in one of the other rooms. Take your time. Get a deep breath. Read the good book if that's what you need. Get right with the Lord. Whatever you need to do to get right. Then we come back, have this conversation. And let's talk about it and move forward. But hey, what did she say that's controlling? 
she if she said that's controlling, then your ass should have never got with me because I've been like this ever since you met me. And you should have never said I do. Has anybody got an issue with control? Like, I mean, a man on this panel, I think with control, I mean, that's a basic uh, ingredient of being a leader, being a control over something, being in command, having authority. So I would say any leader is controlling. Well, look at my... Uh Sometimes you may have to control the situation for the betterment of her. Because when you are when you are moving and operating your emotions and on your feelings, it's not going to be good. We, we 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 know how some of these things end, how some of these things go. Sometimes they act on emotion. They 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 uh, 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 the guy at the bar he's giving a compliment, throwing a throwing a nice word. All of a sudden she's doing things she don't need to be doing. And gonna put herself in situations she don't need to be put in. Men too. We know some men act emotional too. Unfortunately, well, I, it is what it is. And so, why, why put yourself out there like that? Why put yourself in situations where you could be vulnerable or be taken advantage of? For what? Because you you and your feelings? No, 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 no. How about we have a conversation on what it is we need to be talking about? And if you need space, then cool. Like I said, stay the night in the other room, baby. No problem. All right. Go ahead, sweet. Fellas, fellas, don't don't be afraid of that controlling word. Because that's a buzzword. You know, I I, I talked about I talk about the difference between in control and controlling. Call it whichever one you want, ladies. But no matter what you do, adopt the Trev doctrine. This is what it is. Now, if you want to call it controlling, fine. You want to call me in control, fine. Do you realize that I, everything that I do for this family is for the safety and betterment of this family and every member in it? So if you find me being controlling, then it then call then fine. That's what it is. Don't marry me if you don't want to be controlled. Be with somebody else if you don't want to be with if you don't want to be controlled. But if you're going to be with me, you will be controlled. Fellas, have that conversation as soon as possible and then let her decide, because if she realizes that everything that you do, all the decisions is for the is for her to be a better person tomorrow than she is today, then she'll have no problem with letting you be controlling. Shannon, you know what? Uh, you used the perfect word, man. I feel like a lot of people do fear, right? They fear the woman's reaction, right? They fear what, what she's going to do when you present how it is that you really feel. But I urge you gentlemen to say what's on your mind, say what you feel, because what you should fear is what's going to happen if you don't keep a G in the first place. If you don't set the standard in the first place off rip, that's what you should fear. Fear the outcome of what's gonna happen to you when you come in fraud and perpetrating and then realize that now you in a predicament that your whole life is about to be messed up because you didn't keep it real in the beginning. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Sweeney. Be gone, fuck! <laughs> what? <laughs> nah, uh, seriously, though. <laughs> Um, as far as healthy space, um, I'll kind of take some parts of what, uh, what Shannon said, as far as, uh, we do have our own two separate rooms in the house. Like we got our bedroom together and she got her office craft room that she does upstairs and she go up there half the, most of the day. And I'm in here talking to you motherfuckers the rest of the day. So, <laughs> so Come we on. But you know, I got my man K, got my TV right here, PS5 right there that I barely play. I mostly just watch TV and YouTube and shit. And, you know, go to sleep. Um, but uh if she came to me and said she wanted space from me, uh shit. Um, 
I would say that if that is the case, normally you kind of know some shit was going on before that, before that conversation is ever had. You know when your you know when your marriage is on the rocks. You know when shit's about to hit the fan. Y'all been arguing. You know what I mean? Y'all been fussing and fighting for the last six months. So when she finally comes, by the time she comes to you and say, hey, I need some space, you pretty much know why she's saying it. Um, I think Shannon and uh, uh, Marcus kind of said it right. was like, well, how much space do you need and take it all the time you need? Because reality is you can't keep her there. She says she wants space. There ain't shit you can do about that if she's adamant on it. Because, you know, sometimes women say they need space just so you can hit them with the, come on, baby, come back, man. Don't do that. Don't do that to me. Come on now, man. And she just wants you to, you know what I mean? She, she felt like you haven't been showing her no attention, so she's doing it for the attention. But if she's adamant and saying she, try, she needs to get away from you, there ain't shit you can say that's going to make her stick around. She's going to go get, she going to get that space, whether you like it or not. Swinney, it's worse than that. You actually run somebody away by trying to, if they tell you you need space, smother, smother them. You will yeah. run them away. It's, it's tough, you know what I mean? Because like that's that's a totally different conversation than healthy space. <laughs> At that point, you're not talking about healthy space. You're talking about she's trying, she's ready to get the hell away from your ass. But if she's saying, come on now, man, we... All right, we've been we've been watching the same television show all week. Well, take your ass upstairs and go watch your own damn TV show. Then you got a TV up there. You tired of me snoring? I go in like Shan said. I go in the man cave. Shit, I used to, like me. My big thing is I watch TV in the middle of the night and I fall asleep with the TV on. So I leave the room to go to my man cave because then I can watch TV and I also like to talk while I'm watching TV. Or like I'm watching YouTube or watching y'all. I'm talking to the screen. Oh, really? And shit like that. So, you know, I can be a little loud sometimes. So, you know, I bounce and go off into my go off into my man cave and and talk shit to myself. I know so, that's kind of productive. What? <laughs> you, you talk shit to, while you watching a movie too? Yeah, man, I talk shit. I'll tell you, like, what's why you watching a movie? movie? No, oh, Sweeney is the one in the theater. He's the one in the theater messing it up for everybody else. I don't, I don't talk in theaters. I don't talk in theaters. <laughs> I'm starting to see why she needs space if you're talking shit to you. Hey, man. Sometimes, man. Hey. Just, God, hey. damn. No, you know how, like, most of the time, I don't necessarily talk during movies, but, like, if I'm watching, like, panels and, like, podcasts and shit like that, like, I'm trying to respond to the people that's on the podcast or the panel. But obviously, you can't call in, so I'm like pausing and like talking to myself and recollecting my own personal thoughts on it. What? Yeah, I can, I can see Sweeney right now watching a movie with the fellas. And <laughs> statistically wrong, he'd be like, "Oh no, hell no!" Pause that real quick. I looked that up yesterday. That is wrong. Yeah, that's exactly. Like, actually, matter of fact, hey, hey, Meryl, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> hey, Sweeney, do, do you ever ask her the questions from the show? Like, pause it and then y'all talk about the question. Yeah, she asks me every night when I get off the show with y'all. What y'all talk about this time? Now let's rewind. You just gave a classic example why a woman would walk in and say, "I need space." You just lined it up perfectly. <laughs> what did I say? God, you said you actually talk to the TV. Does it answer back? Man, you heard, no, you did say that. I was like, <laughs> why you think I'm talking to myself? Obviously, the TV ain't answering back. <laughs> I'm gonna go on mute. But no, seriously, like part of the reason why I started doing like the podcast and stuff was because I had so much to say, like in response to a lot of the shit that I see. And nobody to say it to. She got tired of me talking shit at the TV. So I was like, shit, let me jump up here and talk to you, motherfucker. Shit, let y'all hear it. <laughs> Wait, sweetie, do you have a dog, Queen? Do you have a dog? No, nah, I don't have a dog, man. Nah, nah, get, I don't have a dog. Get, get you a goddamn dog so he could talk to him. <laughs> hey, 
Hold on, hold on, hold on. I know we're making this like making it out to be Sweeney is really, really peculiar right now, but do y'all do that in sports? Do y'all not talk to the TV sometimes? Like, TV. Or yell or scream, even if you're by yourself? I'll put it out there. I do. If I see somebody make yeah. a bullshit play, I'll be like, come on, man. What the fuck was that? Like, you don't like that type. Y'all, y'all don't do that during sports and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, just, I, right. Okay, you're right. I'm, when I'm, hearing, I'm, I'm yelling. Yeah, I, I, I can agree that I could do that. But I'm not sitting there Even watching by yourself, on the right? panel. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. He, but I'm not watching can. motherfuckers on the he panel on Thursday and talking about, you motherfuckers ain't right. You ain't shit. I'm not booing y'all. I'm not doing nothing. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, no, I do be like, these niggas crazy. Something wrong. Sometimes I <laughs> yeah, do that yeah, yeah. a lot. That's I, what I'm saying. I, like, I think I think we kind of yeah, we I think we kind of we kind of put him out there. But like I, I mean, just little things. Or even if you see something unrealistic as hell, like you see Fast and the Furious scene where they like, jump the mountain or some bullshit. You like, come on, that's some bullshit. You ain't you at least like, come on, that's bullshit. Y'all yeah. do none of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. That. Like. I can't I stand somebody it. talking. I can't. I can't stand nobody talking to the movie. Shut the fuck up! Don't ask no goddamn questions. Enjoy the movie. Oh, you know what? Oh, if there's right. more gunshots than I know the clip allow, like I'm like, come on, bro. You only yeah. got one more shot. Yeah, one more that's shot. what I'm saying. Like, we do that. We all do. We nah, all gotta, do it to some one. extent, right? To some I extent. I got a better one. Don't y'all hate when y'all watch the movie? Y'all really in the movie? And then the ad, uh, advertisement come up. Brazzers is free. This nigga. Wait, what? What are you watching? Where Brazzers is coming up, bro? You know what are you watching? I guess that's in your space time. <laughs> Hey, dog, you better use a different app, man, for them all, man. <laughs> hey, y'all know what's crazy? Y'all know that they blocked all the uh, all, all the sites here in Texas? We talking about all what sites? Just, all the, the sites. Well, there's, there's ways to handle that. DM me, bro. Just get me DM me. But no, they passed a law a couple years back, and now you're starting to see, like, they, the they – don't want because basically Texas requires age verification, and so now yes. all the sites are like, well, fuck Texas. We just not going. We're not going to do it because we won't get in trouble. So yeah. what? So I'll, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'll just say this: if your IP address is listed as coming from Texas, then yes. But if your IP does not show Texas, any site will come up. So basically, we're saying get a VPN, y'all. <laughs> yeah, like, like, come on, Sweeney. Come on, Sweeney. What are we doing? What are we doing, Sweeney? <laughs> well, Sweeney, don't you, don't you still let the motor out there? We can say it. God damn it. Shit. YouTube plastered them commercials all over the goddamn place. We should be able to say you can get yourself a VPN. Well, Sweeney, don't you we still should got be the able to DVD? say a lot of things that we want to say? He doubled down on it on you niggas. Oh, I, I think uh, Hank was trying to say something. Hank. What's up? No, nah, I, I was asking Swinney, does he still got them old DVDs you used to they when they used to come to your barber shop? You know them adult movies. You know what I'm talking about? It's coming to shop, man. You can't be playing no damn DVDs, bro. <laughs> I ain't Sweeney gonna lie. Them DVDs. You know, hey, hey, look, I'm gonna I'm bullshit you not though. Like, so y'all all watch Tubi TV, right? No. So we used to have a thing in the oh. shop called Two. We used to watch Two. We used to have Two B Thursdays, and you know you try to watch the black shows, the black movies and shit. What is up with black people and the over explicit content in the movies, bro? Like, well, it, it, they think that it's doing. the same thing as YouTube. They try to shock you, right? Shock you, so it'll. They think that that's what's going to be the hook sometimes, rather than a storyline. Yeah, it's like it's what, what, that's a genre pers whether you're not so the filmmakers that make those kind of movies I've been invited to produce a couple of those type of movies that it's all intentional it's not like they're they don't know what they're doing it's not like oh I'm just an amateur and I'm just having them do some shit it's it's also they do that in Bollywood as well in India where motherfuckers be doing some outrageous stuff it's the modern black exploitation mm. that's what it is so when you see and, and and we specifically targeted at Tubi because Tubi gives us two hundred thousand dollars a movie. Um, so if we got 
and they want you to. So if you, the motherfuckers be doing hella sex or saying hella street stuff, it's all about identifying with something that's current with current pop culture in the movie that's on TV, which is what you don't normally see on the silver screen. Mm -hmm. So a motherfucker doing something crazy or a bitch shooting a gun and the bullet going around the, tr the tree and all that other kind of stuff is all intentional and on set niggas be laughing about it but we be like yo this is what they want so this is it's really on Tubi it's a give these niggas what they want type thing that's what it is it's not hey Shane did you say 200,000 a movie yeah, he called what's, my, the, he uh, pre, what's the pre -work, what's the prerequisites for that to get 200,000 a movie and I've, um, <laughs> to produce the project uh, so that's really kind of the grandfathered plans. They don't really have that. Now they're doing profit splits because, you know, it started. Yeah, becoming okay, expensive. okay. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I got I know three people, three producers. I don't have a, 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 a direct deal with Tubi. I got three producers who one will give me all of it. You just got to I got to bring it. I got to bring the project in up under him. And the other two will give me a 70 30 split. So if I make a movie with this iPhone 15 Pro and I shoot some bullshit, and it's a full length feature, it's 45 minutes or longer, um, if I give it to them and Tubi accepts it, they'll cut me a check for 200,000 minus the taxes, blah, blah, blah. So you walk away with about 130,000 for the movie. You, you, but Tubi you owns know, everything. You so know Trev this, got a this, movie, this right? It's also a situation where you don't keep your masters. You know, you, sell, you sold all your rights, all your publishing in perpetuity forever, forever but you can sh literally shoot the shit in, in, in a week for 10 grand. And if you're creative enough and you and you're good enough, you could do it with some of the homies. And if it's a decent plot enough that's worthy of Tubi, you could drop it off and make a hundred grand just real easy. Oh shit. Oh, Trev got his own like movie show type thing. Sure. I mean, I, that's what we was talking about before the show. Yeah, you gotta check it out. Oh no, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, wouldn't, I didn't hear it. Hey Trey, I put the link in your link. I'll put I'll put the link in the um in the back chat. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, I got one movie on on Tubi. It's called Pimp Twenty Four Seven. Oh man, I'm about to go up. I'm not, a movie I produced it in two thousand eight. We sold it to Tubi. Uh, I'm, watching I'm this looking tonight. that up tonight. <laughs> watching it tonight. You said Pimp Twenty Four Seven. Mm -hmm. The movie I shot in uh I produced in in uh two thousand eight. What year did I do that? Two thousand eight. I did that. In, I did that one in two thousand eight. And we 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 sent it out. It was, it's a we threw it together for 25 grand, bro. On some old cameras that I had. It's just some, it's just it's a movie that we threw together. And I think we shot it in nine days and made the 25 grand back a long time ago. But then Tubi threw us a bag. So it was like, yo, so that's up there now. I you haven't still, you still work in production? production? Nah, I'm in fashion now. Production is, is, is for I, my love is filmmaking, but I make so much money in fashion, it's hard to go back because I'm older now and i ain't got and i'm a, and i was an independent filmmaker i never worked for a studio i always like like to own my shit so i don't really had a strength to be out there just fucking grilling it like i used to so fashion is a lot easier come you on you a designer or a consultant i'm i design well i could I, I do consulting oh okay well, image we'll connect. hmm Oh yeah, yeah, I know that. I know your image. Yeah, yeah. I, I said, you know your video that you just dropped. I just got notification that it dropped ten minutes ago. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> I must have missed. I missed the joke. I was talking. Yeah, I missed yeah. it too. They slid it up right up on there. You know yeah, what? They said it while we oh. was in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> My fault, y'all. No, it's, it's all good. You guys just tuning in. Welcome to King Talkers. Make sure you hit that like button. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, give me, me put that link in the back. All right, this is uh, Trev. I'm not sure if I can play play it on here, but I'll put it in the chat for you guys. Go ahead and check out uh, Trev's production right here. I just dropped it. <laughs> I <just> caught it. <laughs> NSFW. I'll be watching that tonight, Trev. <laughs> I'm about to give me a good laugh. <laughs> That's before I had the beer, too, so. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs>
He look like he like Styles P. He straight look like Styles P without his. Oh, beard, don't do bro. that. Don't do that. Yo, oh, that, that that's Styles P, bro. That's that. Styles P, bro. <laughs> Yeah, he says sounds P, bro. All right, let's go ahead and get to this topic, man. Uh, the hatred of black women. The hatred of black women. I'm going to play this clip, and then we're going to go ahead and get into it. Y'all ready? Y'all good? Yes, sir. There we go. You know what I mean? I love black women. They're the dopest to me, and it's not taking anything from other women. And it, what's fucked up, too, is when you talk pro when you talk proudly about black women, everyone gets upset. Everyone gets mad because the hatred of black people is so ingrained that if I go, black women are amazing. Well, well you're being racist. What the f Does that even make any sense? That doesn't even make any sense. Black women are the f you. You feel me? All right, I'm going to start with, uh, I'll start with you first, Marcus. How do you perceive the current state of relationships between black men and black women? And what factors do you believe contribute to any tensions or animosity? Um, the current state. So according to YouTube, it's, it's a whole gender war going on outside. Um, I particularly don't seem to see that in practice and in, in like in, re, in real life, but I'm not negating anybody else's experience because it just may be something I'm not privy to. Um, I mean, it's the usual candidates, propaganda, uh, pitting people against each other, uh, the algorithm in, incentivizing things that are salacious, which tend to be the things that paint people in the worst lights possible, like uh, Shannon was talking about earlier on some like the, the the goal is to shock and all through black exploitation or, or whatever. So you have a a, 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 the, a a small minority that are extremely loud and extremely visible, extremely vocal, and is shaping the the way people view each other on a on a on a just regular interaction. Um. Yeah, I I, I as, as one of the people who then caught some 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 bullets behind saying positive things about black women, I mean. It happens, but it's only on a line. In real life, I've never had anybody get mad at me or say anything crazy to me for speaking highly of black women. Like, I've, I just never have it. And I speak highly of them. Um, online, you pandering, you simping. Uh, the black woman is the number one enemy of the black. But, what? I mean, people have said these things to me before. I, I just don't agree. So I, I think in the clip, though, he was talking in relation to other races. In, in whatever circle he's at because it was almost as if it was a shot at other people the way he was explaining it um but i, I wouldn't care how anybody else felt about it like that's that's the issue to deal with okay yeah in the video he was talking about uh, i think he might have been referencing like when they do like black girls rock or you know like black lives matter and shit like that and they when you center one group, then they call you racist for centering that group rather than saying everybody or some shit like that. All right. We'll go to you, Trev. Have you uh have you noticed any specific patterns or trends in the way black women are treated or perceived within society? And if so, what do you think drive these patterns? Absolutely. Uh, I I'd say absolutely. Um and I, I'll say that just from um other black men that have their gripes about black women and then there's other races who i cut short anytime i hear it but um yeah they have they have their gripes right a lot of people don't it shows in everything right i mean it is you see that loud minority right in youtube but then if you look at the dating apps you see the same data right um a lot of people have their gripes against black women it's just it's it is what it is that's very true people do feel that way i don't think it's everyone but there is a lot of people who who do feel like that um just dating within our own culture is tough i talk to a lot of men i talk to a lot of women and you, when you talk about millennials down it's worse than it's ever been right uh it's it, it's almost impossible for them to get along the expectations are ridiculous and it's 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 insane it's and it's real 
I I was thinking that you know I, it's just like in this world or in this YouTube. No, it's not. If you talk to a lot of people from different types of backgrounds, right? Not just um this class or that class. Talk to different people, and you start hearing a lot of the same thing. Uh, not that much of that is in my immediate circle. Me, I don't feel like that. Um, I'm married to a beautiful black woman, but in general. I think that there is just some stereotypes that exist, right? That are not true. A lot of people don't understand it. And, and the, the loud minority that Marcus is referring to is probably the, the women who are guilty of it, right? Because there are some women who do perpetuate these ideas and stereotypes, right? I don't think it's the um, majority. I do think that as a whole, Black women certainly need to learn how to date, right? Um, a lot of them weren't given the foundations by their fathers to actually know how to love, honor, and respect a man the way they should. And a lot of it is, is due to many different reasons, right? Being um, coming from a single parent household, having uh, traumas when they were younger, some things that were out of their control. And if they were never given that foundation or that help or never addressed that trauma, then how do you get better? How do you know how to treat a man? How do you know how to love a man? Maybe they genuinely want to, but just don't have it sometimes. And this, again, this isn't all women, but there are, it's too many that are going through this issue. So I, I think it's, it's absolutely real. It's something that we deal with on a day to day and the way that they are perceived is unfair because there's a lot of great, beautiful black women out here who are doing all the right things, but because of the over representation of what we see online, they're going to get credit for what these other women are doing sometimes. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I'm listening intently to what he's saying. I, you know, I get, I get what he's saying as for promotion of black women, but there's a lot, there's a patch, I would say, that make it like real hard to wholeheartedly agree with a statement. You got a lot of sexy reds, you got a lot of Nicki Minaj's, you got a lot of uh, lottos and uh, ice spices out here. Then if you graduate to the class of the grown women that feel that you need to fit certain criteria. I think black women make it kind of easy to for the for that statement to to hold weight in, in in certain arenas with certain people because a lot of them are showing okay I, I gotta be careful with my words there's a section of them that are showing that they they are implying a hate for black men nowadays with the requirements that they have for us. And I'm not saying the majority, but the ones that permeate certain messages on this 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 uh, YouTube out in the ethos. You look at, let me pull a name, a Princella. Let me pull another name. Um, what's that other girl? Uh, Cynthia G. Cynthia G. And, and and those type of ones, and then they infect other minds that are on the fence that don't know a game plan for coexisting or finding a relationship with a good brother and they start espousing their views and then just mucking up the whole thing and spreading that cancer then those men that try and then they get the backlash they kind of get that taste to hate for them and then when men speak the way they do they return it like, oh, you do hate me, but what are you giving me so that I can st stay loving you, stay being your covering? Most don't want a covering. Most don't want to fall in line. We started with control. A woman, if you say that word, it's like beating that bee's nest. But it can't, it comes in context. So I'm there. I get what Trev says. That's the aspirational part of it. But day to day, what we see out here, we can't say we don't see it. We can't see. We can't say we don't see women out of order and showing hate to us. And it can be given back. If you don't love me, I'm I'm not gonna love you. If you hate me, I'm gonna hate you right back. 
in certain in, in certain aspects. I get what he's saying, but it's there. It's the yin to the yang, and we need to improve as people. But the statement holds some weight, some validity. It's not all false. Okay. So, so Kenny, do you do you? I'm, I'm my bad, Jr. I just want to ask him real quick. Do you um do you feel like I said something very different than what you said? I mean, I definitely you definitely made some valid points, but I don't I don't think it was um I don't think it was very different because you said you know you didn't want to say majority. You were careful not to say that um as i was and uh, i do feel like it's overrepresented i do feel like social media pushes it because i'll put in for instance i've made short clips of long form videos that i've made and what's terrible is that if you mention black woman hits right um if you look at who they push the people who they put to the forefront sexy red sukiana uh, cardi b everybody megan whoever you want to name that's who's elevated to the top right and that's who's able to i guess uh mold the minds of the young people sometimes and when you overrepresent these people because there's some great wholesome singers there's some some neo soul there's some r&b there's some beautiful sisters out here doing the right thing Ow. but they don't never get the promotion never get the promotion they never put to the forefront they never push in the algorithm right so when we see these women representing black women it's horrible. What well I what I will say, and I think a lot of people on the panel are gonna agree, is that even if outside of your dating life, right? If you were to say, All right, what's your sister like? What's your daughter like? What's your mother like? What's your cousin like? Is she a beautiful black woman? Or is she a three oh four out here doing the same damn thing? And a lot of us are gonna say no. She actually is happily married. No. She actually does respect her man. And, that, and and I say that. And that's why I say in my world, I don't see it a lot, right? I was raised, I was fortunate enough to be raised in a dual parent household. My family fortunately does believe in the whole family thing, right? And I'm trying to keep that legacy going the best I can to my, to my ability. And in my immediate circles, I don't see it a lot. And even though I don't, try to help anybody who who um who might be going through that and i tell you this i talked to a lot of these sisters who were doing the wrong damn thing out here and i tried to guide them some of them too far i get it but some people really go in coming with good and they want to learn they want to get better they want to know what men want sometimes it's too late sometimes it's post wall we dig it but at some point they want to learn right and the, the, i think our best bet is to try to intercept it have these discussions like we are tonight so people could hear it but sometimes we just got to try to get to them as early as possible we have to get to them before social media and everything else because it's it's only getting worse but i know i dig what you're saying though but i don't i don't think it was very different than what i was saying no nah, i didn't all say I, that I, I think i think we're in line but i i believe you spoke okay. aspirationally and I'm like, from from what I see, there's a lot of work that still needs to be out here. And the way things are going, men lack the power to be able to express that, okay, this is what I what I require from you. They come and try to tell you what they need from you. And if you don't acquiesce to those things, you get kicked to the side. And the average man can't speak to the average woman. I'm going to give you New York. Hello is a dirty word. You can line up 10 women and you just try to say hello. They'll walk by you like you got a disease, the majority of them. Go go uh, 300 miles down south, whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. So I'm only going off. I got, I only got one more thing for you, Kenny. Yeah. If you had if you had 100 women, right? 100 black women, what percent of these women do you think are marriage material out of 100 women 100 it's black hard. women that, 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 that would if you be just had to, to give a number what do you think just this okay. what you think no, i can't hold you to it but just just from your perspective because you have an idea what's which just what your perspective is it don't it ain't no right or wrong it's just what you feel 35 percent. you think 35 percent out of 100 is marriageable okay mm -hmm. all right let me get to Sham real quick. Sham, how does the red pill ideology perceive and portray black women compared to women of other racial? Well, remember, 
Yeah. Red pill is not is women could be red pill. Red pill is a is, some people call it a praxology. I just call it keep it simple, call it an ideology. Red pill, the foundation of it is truth. That's it. It's not about those red pill guys. You hear it all the time. Oh, those red pill, those, those weirdos, red. Listen, red pill means give me the truth. I don't want the bullshit. I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want, don't, 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 um, you know, ignorance is bliss. I don't want the, don't give me smoke and mirrors. Don't give me what feels good. Don't give me what tastes good. Tell me the truth. Even if it hurts, even if it sucks, even if I got to swallow my, I got to, I got to eat what I got to learn something about me that i never realized. Red pill is all about truth. So when it comes to black women, The truth hurts a lot. And telling the truth means accountability. That's the next, that's the very next step after truth. So once I tell you the truth, now what do you do with this truth? Well, I gotta change or I gotta fix or I gotta, I gotta work on, I gotta repair. And who wants to do that? I don't want to be, I don't want to do that. I grew up with a princess. I, you know, I, my whole life I was told everything was everything I did was right. And whenever I fucked up, it was never my fault. And now as an adult, you expect me to just all of a sudden flip that on the, on its head, turn on a dime, com- do a complete 180 on addressing the issues that you say is happening with me, even though it's true. And you showed me the video, you gave me the fucking evidence, the proof I'm caught, but I still don't believe it. And that's where it seems like it's red pill versus women, because women typically based on their makeup just don't want to be accountable for a lot of their own actions. So let me go ahead and explain this. So the hatred of black women, I'm, I've taken the red pill. I believe in the truth, man. The truth is who is, 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 is all that matters for me, for everything. And I only want to be with a woman that believes in the truth. I own a company you guys called, uh, it's called black folk. I want to check it out. It's blackfolk.net. I own a company. I've had it for, I started it in 2009. It started off as the intellects. I changed the name. It's now called Black Folk. Um, and it's an event conglomerate company. In fact, JR, I want to partner with you for something that's coming up next year. But if you guys go look at blackfolk.net, you'll see it's just an event company. We do stuff, right? Anyhow, the model of Black Folk is there's a difference between those folk and Black Folk. That's my company motto. Me personally, I love black women. I love black women so much that I talk shit, publicly criticize and condemn the bullshit that I see some black women do. And the reason I do that is to ensure that the quiet ones don't do that shit. We be on the internet, we be on YouTube, and we got these panels, and we talk all day, and we this, that, and, and manosphere this, and red pill that, and what's wrong with women, and passport bro, and all, we got all these, but you got to understand something, it's only about two, three hundred of us here in this little small YouTube space that talk, it's only, I, I've, I, I did the numbers, it's only about 200 to maybe 300 of us that have the conversation, it's almost a million of us that's watching. When this video is over, there's going to be thousands of people that watch this episode of this show. They don't say a fucking word. They don't. They're not in the comments. They're not in the chat. They don't. They don't say nothing. Those are the people that we're talking. Those are the kings that we're talking to. Not the ones that we go back and forth with on these shows. You know, uh, Lapeef, let's talk on Thursdays. King talk tonight. Uh, Sheet critique. Uh, we not not us panelists. We're talking to the people that are just watching us. And that's the ones that I want to help. And I have zero problem embarrassing niggas to protect black folk. Now, I know it comes off. It comes off as me being a hater. It comes off me not liking black women and your mama black and, you know, and and, and you just hate women and blah, blah. I get all of that. I understand. I hear all the, the you old man, the great beard, you failed two marriages. I, 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 I've heard it all. That shit don't shame. Don't hurt me no more. Insults don't matter to me no more. All I care about is protecting black folk because there's far too many niggas out here that's looking like the majority when it's really just a loud minority. And so me personally, 
I don't have no hatred for black women. And I don't think most men in the red pill space in the manosphere hate black women. But we are not going to stand by for these niggas that's out here loud and wrong, talking shit, making us look bad. All the black folk that's quiet, all the thousands that's going to watch this episode, the thousands that's going to watch uh, 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 Darwin's uh, podcast and Hink's podcast and everybody else that has a show. Those are thousands of people that don't open their mouth. That's the ones that we need to protect. And it's a lot of them are black women that we love and we want them to do better and not do what these loud niggas is doing. All right. I think I'm going to go to you. I'm going to go to you. Do you think there are any misconceptions or stereotypes about black women? that contribute to the negative attitude towards them? And if yes, what are they? Do I think, uh, damn. Uh, do I think there's some stereotypes? Yes, I do think there's some stereotypes. Uh, but unfortunately, some of these stereotypes are true. So, I mean, the uh, only way you're going to change it if you're going to make a change. All right, ladies, you know, they said one bad apple spoiled a bunch. I believe that. I, I, I truly believe that. And the reason why, because you have a few out here that, that, that makes the real ones look bad. There's some good, beautiful black women out here, man. And, and they're they about their business. They take care of the business. They do what they need to do. That Their, their, their wives... Their, their their future wives, their, their great mothers, and and and, and great uh, um, individuals to be around and have conversations with. But then you got them ratchet heifers. Yeah, them ratchet heifers that don't mean you no good, and they gonna bring y'all down. I'm talking about the ones that that be in the chat sometimes saying some slick shit. They be on watching the show saying some slick shit. Don't see them. You, you go to the you go to your local Wendy's and they acting the goddamn fool. They ready fight in the goddamn Waffle House. They twerking they on Walmart. the restaurant table. Heat. They yeah, twerking on the restaurant on. table during brunch on Saturday. Oh, you know how it is. They think it's a goddamn club. You know what I'm saying? They they got the they get the phones out. You know they one girl in the back. You go, girl. Somebody try to correct, no, nah, don't be doing all that dancing in my restaurant. That's a problem. This man's trying to have a hold a certain standard, and you're going to have that one woman come about, why? Well, don't talk to us. You don't tell us what to, who's going to check us. Or are they going to be uh, saying, like, yeah, I feel like you're just trying to be controlling or, 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 or being a dictator or, or trying to, you know, take advantage of us or something like, no, that's not even the case. What we want to see, y'all be better. That's what we want. Look here, I, I, I'm the I'm the person going to tell you. I'm not going to try to uh, 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 protect you, you heifers. You don't belong to me. I don't give a damn what you motherfuckers do. Y'all can go out there and act a goddamn fool follower because you don't belong to me. Now, if you my woman, I'm gonna have to get it. I'm gonna have to get in your ass because that's a problem. If you my daughter. Are you my uh, daughter-in-law for, for my, when when my son get married? That's gonna be a problem. But all you other heifers out there, you don't belong to me. You belong to some other man, and some other man that got to deal with your trifling nasty ass. So, fellas, leave these heifers out the burn. Stop trying to save these hoes. Stop trying to uh, stop throwing the white flag out for these heifers for what? Let these heifers drown. And whatever misery they're going to drown with, let them eat on that goddamn vanilla ice cream and bonbons watching reruns of Days of Our Life by the goddamn selves. Leave them heifers alone. Stop giving them attention. Have nothing to do with these crazy-ass women. Because they don't mean no goddamn good. I told you many times before, they don't give a shit about your black ass. They don't. If you can't do anything to provide for them or help them or, or take care of them, type of one, most of them don't give a goddamn about you. Now, you got the ones that will. That's the ones you need to link up with. 
Those are the ones you need to be trying to get married to. Those are the ones you need to be seeing. Not these fake ass uh, uh, imitation broads that's gonna bring you, that's gonna try to bring you down. Who's gonna try to uh, do you bad? Who's gonna leave y'all folded in a fetal position, hurting, crying like some old bitch boy? Because she didn't hurt your goddamn feeling. You knew she was crazy from the video, but you ignored the red goddamn flags. You look past the motherfuckers. Why? Because she had a big ass, or the juicy titties. Oh, she put that wet wet on your chin, and you didn't know how to act. So now you 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 you're gonna do whatever you can to keep her around, cause that kid too good. I can't and believe you ain't never. It. Had it. I can't believe it, Jesus. No, that's right. God damn, ain't never had it before. So what you gonna do? You don't know how to stand up no more. You sit down to pee. She took your sack. It's in a goddamn Birkin bag. So, fellas, leave these trash ass heifers alone and get with the real ones. The ones that we know that, 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 that she, she'll be getting with from the giddy up. The one that more likely you pass up because you thought she was nerdy or kind of corny. Or she didn't look all the way what you thought she was. She was only a six because you was going after the eight, nine, and ten. But you know them eight, nine, and ten, they're going to be headaches to your ass. But you taking that six and seven, she's tolerable. But let her put on a little bit of a lip gloss, a little bit of makeup, put herself together. She, she could compete then. That's the ones you need to be dealing with. Fuck these other crazy ass heifers. All right, I'm going to go to Rilla then. I'm going to go to Dara. Rilla, I'm going to ask you the same question. Do you think there are misconceptions or stereotypes about black women that contribute to negative attitudes towards them? And if yes, what are they? Yeah, I remember um, when me and wife, he went to South Beach and uh, I was in the airport we had been doing Thursday. Well, I had been on Thursday for a minute. And uh, now listen, I'm a community stakeholder. I see everything through optimism, rose colored lenses, still do to a fault, right? But when I got in the airport and I saw bonnets, furry slippers and booty shorts, I told JR and uh fam, I was like, man, I, you know, I see it for myself, right? And so, to Trev point, um, in in my life, in my personal cipher, those women don't exist. Not even the ones I'm I'm in close community with. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I mentor, I serve, I, you know, mentor young men and things of that nature. Now they tell me their stories, but I'm not around that those type of uh women or young ladies. But at the same time, I got eyes, I go outside. I mean, I'm literally in the street. I just left from up on the north side and came back south. So I see it. There's some validity to that. I do think there's a, a a loud minority. But Shan, this is not a trick question, but I do want to know if you know the answer to this. What is the opposite of love? And the answer is not hate. It's not hate. But what is the opposite of love? Indifference. Don't they say it's indifference. Indifference. That's the that's the that's the cliche the, the 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 most recent cliche we've been using for the last five years and it's obviously I think, love I, and not hate it's indifference. I I was I was taught that like over twenty years ago, right? And so what I'm saying is, you see men getting other men together. I'm talking to the sisters just briefly because uh, I see the sisters monkey flipping in the chat. You see men talking to other men, getting men together because they care. If men didn't care about women they wouldn't say a motherfucking word they do exactly what hink hink telling the brothers to do they leave them unruly heifers by the wayside leave them at what you say leave them in the restaurant or whatever leave them at the waffle house awful house whatever and go about their business and wouldn't have nothing it's brothers like me that's out here like nah 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 there's redemption for everyone <laughs> let's get it together guys come on community right None of us are as strong as all of us, guys. Come on. I don't think it's hatred for black women in the way that is being perceived. What it is, is just what Shan was saying. Truth is uncomfortable. Truth hurts. It does not feel good to rip that Band-Aid off. And you got to look right in that mirror and deal with what's in front of you. And to the sisters that say, uh, you know, well, that ain't me. Well, look to your left and right. Is it your neighbor? 
Are you complicit in their behavior by not saying nothing? Again, <laughs> Ella says this about the women, the good women. We can't tell who's who because the good women standing next to the hoes and don't want, you know, y'all are cover the hoes. Y'all are take hits for the hoes. Defending their right for hoism. And that's not even your, that's not even your MO. Right? So the brothers, I, I really want the sister to imagine what would y'all do if brothers really did shut up and not say nothing to y'all? Nothing about women, period. And went on about their long hair. They ain't talking about getting no passports, going up. Well, they don't even talk about y'all like in that regard either. They just tell the brothers, get your passport. Go for, go find love where you think you're gonna find it. Are, are these men? trying to get married and they just not talking to well, them. I want to get into that. I want to get into that. I'm just saying, Marcus, I don't want to get into that. I don't know what they doing. I want to, I don't, I, don't, I, I, don't, I, I, I truly no. believe if you ignore them, the women you don't like, then they, if enough people was ignoring them, they get curious as why they not get no attention. Women thrive oh, off attention. Saying, yeah. That's so, the girl. Even fighting with them is attention. Like, you know how they be like, y'all reward the hoes because y'all fucking all the hoes. That's attention. We like we're not giving them what they want. They're not getting a relationship. They just getting dick. They like look the same to me. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. So fighting them is the same as as loving them for acting the ways you don't want. Just ignore it. Hey Marcus, before you keep cooking, I'm gonna go on mute. But I wanna I wanna issue this challenge to the brothers. Uh, to Hank's point, stop liking these heifers pictures on Instagram, fam. And a lot of you niggas that are cool with me on Instagram, I see your raggedy ass when you liking that nasty hook of print picture. Why you can't just look at it and appreciate that shit and keep it moving? You participating in this shit, man. Stop liking these hookers pictures and then complaining about whole economy when you participating in it. Tricking ass nigga. It's Kenny. Uh, Kenny doing that shit. You act like you don't eyeball it yourself while you playing with your action figures. I ain't the only one on this panel. Don't point your finger over here unless you point like this, guy. Like, <laughs> because I I know I done seen. I went on a page yeah. and I seen my man in the Alabama uh, polo right there. <laughs> the, and I was like, yeah. God. I ain't calling no names, Darwin. Oh man, you. <laughs> what you see me doing? Oh, hey, Explorer challenge. <laughs> Explorer challenge, Darwin. <laughs> I saw y'all doing it oh, weeks ago. Explorer. I already saw it. I watched. <laughs> He's a goddamn well, bully, man. <laughs> what's the question? Every, though? Every, uh, <laughs> I got a question for you, Darwin. How do how do the red pill teachings and on masculinity and power dynamics influence attitudes towards black women, especially regarding issues of submission and dominance? Hmm. I think this is a totally different question from what everybody else has. Eh? <laughs> so you got everybody name written down with a different question, but okay, I like this. Well, I would say that it it just uh it exposed a different reality that they still struggle to accept today. You know, I think the red pill ideology uh, gets negative pushback because it said, it, it, it typically says what a lot of men want to say, but they can't say it because it's not safe for work or not safe for their brand, not safe for their, their you know, the direction they're trying to go in with their company. Uh, it's just the reality, man. It's just the reality thing, man. Um, knowing that you can't have it all, knowing that you got to qualify, uh, those are th those things women struggle with um, when it comes to relationships. And I'm not sure if the red pill touches on anything outside of relationships. From my understanding, it's it's been relationships, maybe because I've been in this, this space. But I don't I don't know any other topics or any other genres of entertain uh media the red pill touches on. But it's, when it comes to relationship, it's just it's basically, you know, letting men know that, hey, look, you don't have to deal with this. You know, there's 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 women abroad. Um, and then we got to come together if we want to and, and force some type of behavior from the women that we we have to date over here. 
the women that we have to someday marry, the pool of women we got to choose from, um, the potency is on the negative side. Uh, so what do we do? We have to start bringing back shame. And I think the red pill is, is just exposing the foolery now. And I, I would, I wanted to answer what you said, what you had said earlier about, you know, the, the black woman being awesome, but I don't know. I guess we kind of got away with, got away from that. But uh, no, no, if you want to touch on it, go ahead. What I wanted to say to that is, I think black, I think the dude was right. I think black woman is, women is awesome. Um, if they weren't, you know, we wouldn't be so triggered or or kind of ticked off or upset whenever they start doing all this all this foolish behavior. And I think the expectations for the black women is high. Um, because of our ancestors, our ancestors paved the way, you know, so that they can they can thrive in today's society. And whenever they do anything other than thrive, then it's kind of really disappointing. It's like a gut punch because we got so much high expectation for the black women, um, given our ancestors history and what they did to put us here. Uh, we want to see better. You know what I'm saying? And, and whenever they conform and follow other races and cultures is it becomes distasteful and, and hurtful and disappointment which is why we come out and we we say something about it so we i would say the men like like uh shannon and all those like the men who are actually coming out and, and pointing the finger and say hey this is disgusting we need to tighten up these are the brothers that are actually showing that they love the, the black women because if we didn't we wouldn't be saying shit to them you know what I'm saying we would just disregard them. Like, okay, go ahead. What the heck? Go on. But I, I don't, I don't think their behavior is to the point where it has an impact on them being able to be uh, chosen or a wife. Because we have so many men that are deviating from masculinity and upholding a principle or any standards to the point to where they would, they would still date these women and still show them entertainment, so to speak. Which sort of what Chicago really was saying, and actually marry these women uh, uh, at a rate to where um, it doesn't really matter if you got a, a bunch of uh, sexy reds and uh, Chicago realers out here. I mean, I'm sorry. Glor <laughs> well, he he popping, damn. You My man, bro. I just saw the gorilla and I was like, you know, gorillas out right. here, you know, popping that ass, so. And that's the reason why, you know, I kind of pivoted into what I was talking about and started focusing on the men because I saw talking to these women is like smoke in the mirrors. I don't even know if that's the right term for it. But then when I started to talk to the guys and, and I see the comments and the feedback and the guys are like, damn, man, I'm, I wish I would have knew this when I was younger, you know, or I wish I would have. I needed this. You know what I'm saying? Now I know how to move in my relationship. When I started hearing those things and I knew that the brothers have to go and talk to the brothers because the only way that these women going going to change is if they see change in us because they're naturally followers and we're naturally leaders. So we have to lead from the front. And that's another reason. I think that's the most important reason besides JR, you know, talking to me, uh, was the reason why I came back over to the people, specifically King talk is because I knew like, Hey, this is a plate. This is a space for us to share information with each other. And figure out what you know what's the best way moving forward as men collectively. So bruiser, real quick. So <clears throat> give me give me a percentage of how many women, from what you said, I listen intently, are falling into their feminism nowadays. If you if if you could just like uh Trev did to me, give me a number like a percentage. That are falling into the feminism? Yeah, like feminism. Because you you just made a case that you you did admit that there were issues. Yeah, there there there's, there is issues as clear as day. Okay, so, so are you saying a percentage of I think what Trev asked you was what percentage of black women are wife material? Yeah, but I'm giving you the percentage. I'm not going back. Are you asking me the question or are you asking me feminine? Yeah, what, feminine. What what I asked. How many women nowadays that you feel fall into their feminism? Because we're pointing out the difficulties and you also, you broached on a couple, which I, 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 I agree with. 
Kenny, are you saying feminine or are feminists? Femininity. Femininity, right? Okay. Femininity, feminism. Okay. Feminism. Ooh, that's Kenny, those three different things now. Yeah. They... <laughs> <laughs> femininity, <laughs> feminism, and feminine is three different things. I think you need to get on the boots on the ground uh program again and figure hey, out yeah, that I'm way not... too much. <clears throat> but yeah. Y'all not gonna bully the bully now. Y'all not okay, gonna do okay, this. Hey, okay, I I I I withdraw feminism. Fall okay. into that fall into that femininity nowadays. Fe femininity. Okay. Uh whew, man, from my from my perspective, uh I would say seven out of ten, seventy percent. So, and and the reason why I say that is because the status I've reached, you know, the levels I've reached in life, change the the type of women that I'm around and I'm exposed to, actually change. So I would say maybe fifteen years ago, it would be it would be around a thirty percentile, but because I've leveled up. I've got ex I got exposure and access to different women to where I start to see a difference in behavior and this difference in women embracing and femininity based on actually my level and where I actually hang out in the uh, the spaces I'm able to get into and have access to different type of women. It all changes. And I didn't know that until I actually start growing as a man and, and leveling up as a man. I started having access to certain women and they start painting a different picture for me. So I started to see very, I started to see a lot of contrast between behaviors, uh, depending on what level I was at, at a man, as a man. So, so, are, you, so are you saying that 70, that went, those, that group of women represents 70% of women, or are you saying that 70% of those women that you now encounter are following? That I've now encountered, yeah. All right, okay, I think real quick. Quick. overall. Yeah. So real quick, how long you been with your wife? How how long I've been with my wife? Yes, sir. About eleven years. Eleven years. Yeah. So you said fifteen years. You went from thirty percent to seventy percent. But you so yeah, fifteen fifteen years ago. The 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 women that I that I was exposed to. I would say every 10 women I I came in and encountered with, three out of 10 women would show, would fall, like your, your words, fall into their femininity. And okay. as I leveled up, as I leveled up, and, I, and it ain't gotta be women that I'm actually trying to pursue, but just women that I've been around and able to see their behavior, their, you know, their persona, you know, their, their, their character, you know, how they carry themselves. I started to see more classier, more disciplined, more feminine women. Because of the spaces I've been able to been um, privileged to be around, you know, be be, you know, the excess of women I've been around. Because like, I don't even go to the same spaces, uh, same joints, same clubs. Uh, I don't even hang out at the same spots I used to. Based because of my because of the the mindset I have now, you know, it changed with the level I've reached as a man. So I don't even participate in certain circles no more. I lost a lot of friends cut a lot of friends off so how what percentage of your friends would you say you had to cut off i would say maybe maybe 90 percent that's a lot of goddamn people bro yeah, yeah. so Dar, <laughs> did, did you answer his initial question though which was like what percent do you think overall is right now versus what what your perception of what what is you see but talk, I, mean, he's he's, I think when he was talking about overall, overall right yeah shoot i would I, i'm on i'm on uh I'm with you on that trail. I'm with you on that trail because black in the black community already out the gate, just based off of aesthetics, based off of appearance, um, they're already uh, out of their femininity being overweight. I think it was 60, 70 percent uh, in the black uh, black race of black women are are overweight. So I think I think that contributes to feminine. I know a lot of people don't want to contribute to that, but I think. The the being over being overweight has uh, is ties to being disciplined and being healthy and and main, maintain maintaining a healthy lifestyle. I think that has something to do with femininity as well. Okay, so what's your number now? Being that you brought another facet to the table. No, I, I think I answered it right, Sharif. 
You said well, seven you, out of uh, ten, but then you bought a new cat. And you said I, overall, I said, yeah. I, I think you said thirty-five percent earlier, right, Trey? That was Kenny's perception. I never gave a number. I no, asked no, him. To, okay, I presented okay. the question to Kenny, so, so that means and I, then he I'm said thirty-five percent. I mean, yeah. Kenny. Here's the thing, Trev. Trev was beelining to what I wanted you to answer. Your what what you answered was what's around you. I asked on a whole. Yeah, on a whole. On a whole. That means all black women in general. Yeah, I would say I would say only 35 or uh, 35 or, or 40 percent of them actually fall into their um femininity. And I'm only basing off basing off of the you know weight standards. I haven't okay, even gotten so. to the to the attitude and all these other other things. Okay, so you know, last week you made a whole case as for why when I brought up getting other women in the polygamy and the reasons why they'd be more acceptable because they fall into those things that we know naturally more so over in those places that I pointed out. And you just gave an example to fit exactly why I said what I said. You know that, right? Right. So you say, based on, so are you saying that your argument on polygamy is no, based I'm just on saying the basic of we broke it down. We parsed through it. As for how women behave, their behavior, how they treat men, as on a whole, if you grab like a woman from over, say Kenya, how they were raised, remember that? And we parsed through it because you didn't agree with certain things, you're allowed to not to disagree. Now, if you're saying 35% you deem on a whole are acceptable or marriage quality or per standard, what do you think I was pointing out when I said what I said? What do you, you, I don't you know, just, man. I, I, I don't know exactly what, what you're trying to get from this dialogue, but I can say this. When you say femininity, that's one thing. But then when you say marriage quality, that's another thing. Because a woman who's overweight can be a suitable wife. It is all, it is all subjective to the man that wants to marry her. Yeah. I agree, but you used it as a negative, didn't you? No. You didn't just use it as a negative? No, I didn't use it as a negative. I didn't I didn't I didn't attach the word negative to it. Okay, so let's let's just pass that. You just made a case how you did a 360, or uh, actually a 180. A 180 on what we were spoken about if you parse it through. Just take polygamy out of it. You see this the state that I did point out as for why men would do what they do because it would be more acceptable. Say, just take polygamy out of it. You see how far gone from your eyes view, if you looked at it and you pointed out certain things, they don't have to be accurate stats. You can see how far, far gone it is. In your groups, like in your specific area, you say seven out of 10, but you said on a whole, you agree around me 30 35 percent right so you would agree that we're in a bad state over here if it came to it for over america, here in america right women. yes america yeah yeah i would say i would say we we got some much needed work to do so that mean it'd be fair to put everything on the table polygamy and all and if guys are having one, two, three, four wives, and they're able to fall under their covering and not get pushed back, not be rude for fit, feminine, friendly, because most of those women over there are fit, feminine, and friendly and will easily not give you pushback. You you just went 180 to show. So you're saying my, you talk, that well, now sense. you're talking to the women in your country that won't give you pushback, right? Not my country. I mean, the I country mean, you're referencing well, is Nigeria, right? Yeah, yeah, just just roughly. Okay, I, I I agree that I agree that they. I mean, based off of what you said, I I'm with that. I'm hip to that. But these women over here, are you suggesting that because of the, the 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 uh, the difference in a woman being a a suitable wife and not based on the thirty five or uh, thirty seventy, that we should enforce or we should men should be looking forward to being in polygamous relationships. No, I didn't say that. I said we parsed through it. I just gave as for behavior, 
as for why men. I said, take polygamy off the table. I got to make sure we share the mic. Uh, you know. yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out where he's going with it. That's all. Um, Golden Pisces said, if you're five pounds over normal weight, you are considered overweight. So you guys don't like dick? Get well, that's that. all. Like yeah. I said, that's subject. Yeah. And that's the reason why I said a suitable wife can be overweight. Okay. Like we million. don't know what overweight looks like in the black man's eyes. Come on, lady. stop calling it thick. Thick. We know what y'all know when we when we reference overweight, what we're talking about. We're not talking about. Come on now, we talking Lizzo. We all know what Lizzo is. All right, um, let me go ahead and get Swinny in there. So I got a question for you, and then feel free to uh, transition into the video or respond to the guys. But have you personally experienced or witnessed? instances of discrimination or mistreatment towards black women and if so have these experiences shaped your perspective uh, i don't have these experiences shaped your perspective uh, yeah i'm on youtube every day you see that shit every day uh but if you're referencing my personal life yeah saying some motherfuckers they don't like black women um has it shaped my perspective no There's- oh, it, it's- it's how have it how have these experiences shaped your perspective? Um, I've been I've probably said this plenty of times. Uh, real and Marcus said this too, but like in real life, you don't actually see these things happen as often. Um, I obviously I know it exists because people ain't getting together, so it has to be there. But in my real life, you know what I mean? I just see folks trying to get, you know what I mean, get from one end of life to the other. But let's let me let's look at it this way. Let's assume all we're talking about is what is being said or done in public in this space. Right? Let's just assume that we keep it so strictly social media, strictly YouTube. Can we honestly say? that there has been a positive image coming from black women. Just in these spaces, YouTube, um, social media, because this is what we're talking, right? Because nobody ever talks about their real life experience all that all that much. But if we go, both of what a lot of us consume, is it positive? Is it mostly positive or is it mostly negative? And I think if 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 we all answer that question honestly, it hasn't looked good. I mean, like think of it this way: we do. I've we've done several shows, right? And I can almost bet my bottom dollar that seventy percent of the seventy percent of the men on every single show, regardless of the show, have been married. But when we invite women into these spaces, do we see the same thing? How often do we see them come up here and be a great representation of themselves? I think 70% of them are divorced. I also think men protect their wives so they don't want them on panels where they could run into this this or argue with them. As a matter of fact, I accept that, Marcus, because you ain't lying about that. A lot of the times, men don't like for their well, us in particular, because if we if if we're talking about the man that's on YouTube and we see what happens, then we kind of protective of our wife because we don't want to subject them to that. So that might be another thing. And then also, I think sometimes maybe the wives who are out there are afraid because reality is only thirty eight percent of black men are married, only thirty three percent of black women are married. So all of us, most of us, aren't married. But when we talk about what our representation online is, what we decide to put out there, what we condone, I can honestly say that I don't see men as uh, condoning a lot of the bad behavior that we see in men. If you ask us, hey, that nigga over there got six baby mamas, how do you feel about that? Most of us call that dude a clown. There are some people that'll be like, hey, man, 
Like, remember when that dude came out and said he had six baby mamas and none of his and none of them know who he is? Did y'all see the man champion saying, hell yeah, bro? What's most of us saying? Hey, bro, you out of pocket. Most most of us did say he was out of pocket, but then it transformed into this is the woman's fault for letting him do this. I don't know if he was around and then he started okay. hitting panels and they was they was putting up the, the onus back on women. Well, I mean, yeah, because, you know, we're going to I get the shifting of the blame. But did we condone his behavior? No. So you think Nick Cannon is a clown? I don't. Most definitely. Why is he a clown? He's he's articulate. He's intelligent. The, the, the one thing he made a point about is that he wouldn't have enough time to spend with all his kids, but he's a working man, high level. Most of those don't have time to be in one place, even if they did have kids. You understand? But none of his kids want for nothing. None of his child, children's mother talk badly or ill about him, even down to, to Mariah Carey. So what's the basis of him being in a ill light with you? Because I don't believe in men doing that. That's what oh, he's a clown. You want so, to talk about so You're in your feelings. No, he's a clown to me for that reason. Now, if you want to say other things, if you want to list off other things, and I didn't say he's a clown as far as how what he does and as far as his career, I say he's a clown for having multiple baby mamas because okay. I don't agree with that lifestyle. You don't agree with the lifestyle, but what makes him a clown? Because I don't agree with that lifestyle. I think that's very bad. So, so let me, let me, so let me ask you I, don't, I don't get what you're asking me because <laughs> lifestyle you know what i mean then that means that i think it's clownish behavior for you to go out there and make multiple baby mamas and have a bunch of kids with multiple women the same way that i look at future the same way now okay. now if you want to say why like, you think that he's a great man in that aspect that's you but so you know I mean? that's when i brought up the bible king solomon he, he's a clown to me yes he would be Okay, let me ask you this, Sweeney. Let me ask you this, Sweeney. Why? why is this? It, well, let me ask you this, Sweeney. If, if, okay, so King Solomon, that, that's a perfect uh, question, by the way, Kenny. Okay, but let me just say this. If I'm a multimillionaire, let's, let's just say I'm a billionaire. You think it's smart for me to have as many children as, I, as possible? Do you think it's smart? No. Okay, why not? Because, you know what I mean? You said, like, who's raising them? You can't be there. You can't be in eight different places at once. Okay, so what if I told you the reason why I wanted to have 12 children is because I wanted to expand my bloodline as much as I can to be as immortal as, as, as possible. If that's your like, goal. Like, like kings used to do back then. If that's your goal. That's your goal, but my principles regarding a father needing to be there with his child and not, you know, I don't believe in having multiple baby, eight, nine kids by nine different people in nine different households. So whether you do it because you want now, if that's your goal in mind is that you want to have as many kids you want to possibly have, fair, but that doesn't mean I have to support it. Okay. You got your for what you want to do it. It is what it is. Okay. Okay. So because it doesn't okay. fall into your ideology, it is buffoonery. To me, yes. So, you, Sweeney, how about that? That makes you a narcissist. What, if that's what you want to call it. Is it not? So, Sweeney, how about... <laughs> no, there's a full-blown definition of what a narcissist is. And I think we all may have narcissistic tendencies, but no, I don't think that that will make me a narcissist. If that's what you want to call it. That's but, actually a medical diagnosis. You have to be right. diagnosed. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, check this, Sweeney. What if they all lived in the same household? And he could check in with the entire family together, right? Let's say he has four wives or whatever, but they all live together. Would you then still think that's clownish or? If he can have eight women live in the same household and have a peaceful house and he can still raise all them kids, they're there with him. They with him. Okay. So you, you good with that? Yeah. But He's crazy. not a clown. Okay. You are a hypocrite. So, let, me, let me tell you something. The same thing you jumped off. You jumped I off the live with. Did you not so, hear that? 
Listen, about, the Nick, right now, uh, let me, about Nick, about Nick Cannon, real quick. Um, you got Future that we talk about, and then you got Nick. So let me be clear for those that don't know uh, who uh, what Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon, none of his pregnancies were accidental. All of Nick's children are were planned. All of Nick's children, Nick had a conversation with the mothers before he impregnated them. He didn't he didn't shoot up the club with some chick that he met at, and then uh accidentally was a whoopsie. He was not it wasn't it wasn't what future did, it's not what you know Chris Brown did. It's not it's, it wasn't like god damn, can I get a DNA test? All of the children that Nick Cannon has, he talked to the mothers before he had them. They knew the situation. Nick Cannon is not on any child support whatsoever, court ordered. All he has money set aside, a couple million for each child, already set. And the entire and his whole plan was the exa- the example that Darwin had put out there about a billionaire spreading a seed to expand his lineage. Nick's whole idea was because he's on this king thing. You see him with the turban, and he's he he's he's a little different. And his whole thing is, I want to create a kingdom. And in order to do that, I need to have children. And so what he did was he found the women that he decided that he liked to have children with, had a conversation with them, dated some of them. Some of them he didn't. You know, it's not that many of them. So a couple of them had a few. Like the one, I think one, two of them had two. You know, of course, Mariah got two. I think it's nine kids total. Nine or 11. I get, I get it mixed up. Yeah, just, think, just to be just to be clear, for those that don't know the situation with Nick, that's why a lot of people are on the fence about Nick and don't really classify him as the future type, type guy that's just out there just, just rapping and hitting up clubs and getting turned up and smashing chicks in the, you know, after the concert and it's like, fuck, man, I, shot, I, I fucked her and you know, she got pregnant. Oh, well, I guess I got to just send her some, some money. That's not, that wasn't Nick's plan. So just for those that criticize Nick Cannon, just want you guys to know that it wasn't by accident that he had these children. He had these children intentionally with these women intentionally to do something that he wanted to do himself that he had a plan for. And that's why he not a single baby mama is complaining. Not a single one of them has anything to say bad about him. And he is not on any kind of child support. So now with continue your conversation, but I wanted to make sure that you guys understand a little bit of context on Nick's plan before you guys continue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I was familiar. I, I got that familiar. part. Uh, yeah, the was, only been thing with that. That, with that, right? So this, I, I could kind of agree with his point. Um, the only point that I agree with as far as Sweeney's concern is in the household, right? And the reason I say that because most of us on our, a lot of, well, let's say many of us, right? Um, especially people who do red pill. We talk about how horrible single mothers are at raising children now with that logic it makes sense we know we know the numbers right we know how, how bad the metrics are when it, when a father's not in their lives if they're raised by a single mother so that's why i say it's important for us to have as much contact as possible with the children the best result is when they're raised in the same household with their father that's undeniable at this point right when we look at the when we look at the stacks if the father is part of the life then they won't be a failure likely they they won't be a dropout they'll probably be successful in their own relationships they we know we know though everybody's read those off already so by th- by that logic if we're if we're going to say that fathers are going to do a way better job as far as raising a child with or without the mother then it would be wise for us to be in close proximity with the children so that's the point where i, I kind of agree with sweeney as far as raising them in the same household i ain't in the business of calling nobody clown or whatever but i think for your best result the father should have a lot of time with the children that's that's what i think i think that you should have as many children you can do what you want i'm not going to tell nobody what you want but if you were going to ask me what's the best result then i would say the best result would be to have as many children as you can nurture Trev, I agree with you, but it's a different dynamic when you have means. Finances cure a lot of problems that most have. You're able to provide her with a lifestyle where the children are kept. But the father figure, I agree. That part right there, I agree, because you would want both parents. There's a yin and a yang to everything. But if someone can 
provide a lifestyle where those kids are safe, taken care of, educated, providing all tangible goods and 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 leading. You you never know what direction a kid is going to go in, but the percentages are higher that your kids will be successful with the necessary things and without the financial stress. The biggest thing we say about single mothers, which which, which makes it bad, they don't have the financial, the the finances to foot. The, the lifestyles that they need now that they have a kid, those mostly, when we speak of it in a negative fashion, those kids are made by Pookie and Ray Ray's and people that didn't want to be with the baby mother. And then you can throw in all the factors that would make a child struggle. We're removing. I, I agree with that, but I think that our most important attributes that we provide for our children are structure and discipline. Right. Even more than means, because I've seen some people come up in poor households right, or whatever you want to call it, live in poverty and still be able to have a successful child because they gave them that type of discipline. Right. And we can't deny the fact that if you have the means, it's going to absolutely improve your quality of life. And, and of course, if you have wealth behind you, you are more likely to be successful. But I think even more important, if I had to choose between the two means or structure and discipline. I would certainly choose the structure and discipline of a father over the means. Also, we, so we, also, we create we, we creating broken households. That's what Nick Cannon is creating broken households. And so you can't put a price tag on time. I mean, is that what we doing? We 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 put a price tag on. So now he's buying love because that's what it sounds like. That's exactly what it sounds like. He's buying love because just because he got the means means he. He's going to buy the love of the children. No, what about, what about spending time with your children? Waking up to your children, going to bed with your children, seeing your children off to school, seeing them uh, take their first steps, speaking their first words, being involved in every type of way. As a man, you should be involved with your kids. I can't say that about Nick. Nick's not doing that. Now, Nick may be doing for the girl he may be living with currently, and he might be providing for them kids. But what about them other eight or nine kids he got? How do you think they're going to feel? Why ain't my daddy here? They're going to feel some type of jealousy and resentment. Why why is, why is my brother Tony get to spend all the time with him? But I can't. What are you going to say? You're going to get on the Zoom meet and try to console him? But that's not going to fix the problem. That ain't going to do nothing but put a Band-Aid on it. And then guess what? He's going to go back to feeling that same way again. Because he ain't still over with Latoni. But me and little Mikey, we, we ain't getting no quality time. Because our dads, maybe I heard shooting another, a, a, a video, a, a, a movie, or doing some more shows, or whatever the case may be. Doing his podcast. He got time to do everything else besides take care of his goddamn kids. Be there for his kids. Not just in the financial aspect, but in the physical aspect. In the emotional aspect. Kids need that. I mean, I, 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 look, I don't, I don't, I don't get it, man. There's no way I would turn my back on my children, and that's what he's doing when he's doing this. He's turning his back on his children because if you're not there, you're turning your back on your kids. Just because I can afford to take care of them, don't mean anything to a child. Again, like you say, you can't put a price on 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 when your your, your father's there, your mother that we talk about broken homes, how it feels to be man without uh, their father in their life. So imagine the same thing for these kids. And this man got all the means y'all talking about got all the bread in the world. But he not there. Nah what's I, a, I, what's an adequate amount of time for uh, a high man. value man that doesn't do a nine to five at the same, at the same time you, you spend on, on doing take doing the shoot. Them same seven and eight hours you spend on uh, doing a movie or, 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 or filming or doing your podcast, you should be spending with your kids. And if you got eight, nine, ten, or twelve kids, it's hard to do that. Now you're spreading yourself thin. So but he's not even average, doing that. He doing that. The average child, if y'all, I mean, I'm just trying to gauge this and make some sense out of it. The average child in Amer in America, we got, we already got a single mother epidemic. The average child in America, what would y'all say that is the um, on average amount of time he gets to spend with a father figure that's necessary for I did the uh, growth and development on on, on masculinity side? It's the numbers. It was about four, four to five hours a day. 
That's how much time you legitimately get to spend with your kid realistically. Okay, so what's adequate? I would argue that that's pretty much you have to make the argument that that is adequate. Do you think he's spending an hour with them kids a day? We don't know. Well, no, but the thing is, is that if, if it's, oh, wait, hold on. I I see it. It's, 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 he called himself the hardest working man in showbiz. That's what he called him. You can't be that title and still spend all this time with your kids. You're not. And and God forbid, if he has a special needs child, how much attention that child needs. He's not giving that to them kids, man. So, so you don't he's think putting he all that pressure on his, on his baby mama and his ex-wife. He's 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 not doing anything different than what Future's doing. So we call him a pookie. What's he doing any different? Regardless if the kids was intentional or an accident, they steal your kid. What is the pressure, Hank? What do you mean? What's the pressure? What's the pressure? You said you're it's, he's putting that child's gonna be a young bitch. Yes, the child. The, the pressure is, is raising the kid by yourself. That's that's pressure. Okay, so we we change the dynamic. I feel the way you're no, moving you is your, you did. I didn't change it. I never moved off this off this uh off this stance. I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't agree with what he's doing. Okay, so I put the dynamic me some on my phone and the finances were allowed so that each child's mother doesn't have to want for anything. That's a different dynamic. Than a mother that has to want where where is the pressure? So now, so that's what I'm talking about. So you trying to replace your time and, and, and your presence with money? You think that's all a child needs? No, I'm in agreement with you with that. Well, that's, so what now, that's what you're pretty you pretty much. I, I gave you enough money, ma'am. You should be good. That's still no. pressure. Where, where a son wants to see his father, wants to play catch with his father, wants to spend time Agreed. with his father. That's a, that's a thing. A daughter wants to spend time with their father, see their father. That's a thing, man. I, I Look here. Agreed. Again, I, I can't go with it because I would never do that to my son or my daughter. And I agree, but I can't see Hink from what Hink does from someone that is as busy as him entertaining running businesses, not in one place at the same time. Most high value men, the numbers have been done. They barely have enough time to be home. So if that's the case, then spreading yourself even thinner sounds like a good idea. If if the means justify the ends. And what I, I, I think what Kenny's trying to explain to you guys, I think what Kenny's trying to, you, guys, trying to say is that listen the reality kenny's coming from a reality standpoint so the point is you guys are saying well, nick cannon had nine kids he ain't spending no time with his kids at all right but then you got the billionaire who's running fucking oracle or goddamn amazon or whatever it is who don't spend time with his one kid and so if the numbers are that high and that's what he, kenny's using high value he's talking about high functioning People that are have to travel, that's always out of town. Every time you go to the airport, they got they got the private jets. They're always they're overseas, and they got but they still Trump, Donald Trump with with uh Con, Conrad, I think his son's name is or whatever. How much time do they spend <clears throat> with their children? And we're talking. There's a lot of rich people out there that's very high functioning that do a lot of shit. They got one or two kids that they barely see that they got to FaceTime all the time. Somehow, Shame. it sounds like you guys are giving them a pass because they just had two kids. And Nick is a failure because he had nine kids, yet neither one of them, both of them are spending about the same amount of time with their kids. So, Shad, I don't so, give them pass to none of them motherfuckers. They all goddamn deadbeats to me. Well, you got one or 21. You ain't shit as a father. I don't. I, I said it before. I can't stand deadbeats. Them motherfuckers ain't shit. If you ain't taking care of your goddamn kids, you ain't shit to me. And now you making us other men who are doing the, the right thing. You making us men look bad. I have no okay, sympathy so for that, that motherfucker. With that notion, now, so I got you, Hank. You saying, look, man, I don't give a fuck. You got one child or twenty children. If you ain't doing the time as a good father, you're a fairy to me. Got you. Understood that. Here's the thing. If the wife slash mother 
is fine with it. You don't hear nothing about it. The men that's out there traveling and doing what they got and they got women. Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't spend time with his sons, but nobody's going to trip because Maria Shriver was fine with it because she took care of the family. There's a lot of families out there where the woman in the traditional roles is doing what they need to do. And dad is working. He's going to tap in with us when we can. And they are totally OK with it. But you'll never call them. A, you'll never be able to call them a deadbeat because they woman don't call them a deadbeat. If the woman is good with it and the family is good, we well, see so many times we say, look, if it works for your family, I'm fine with it. But suddenly we got all these opinions on people where the people in the family that's actually in the shit ain't tripping. Well, so how can we trip on Nick if none of his women is tripping? The no different thing. How can we trip on a billionaire who ain't never really around his family, but his wife ain't tripping? We should. Uh, that billionaire is smart because that's, that's our problem. We should. We should. But, but I, I don't know. All, I don't know all these stories like what you just saying, Chan. I'm just hearing about this shit. If I know about it, I, I'm gonna speak on. It. Yeah, that motherfucker. You ain't shit, motherfucker. You ain't yeah, shit. Yeah, but you got you. Yeah. You got men that's, that's going to say about them ain't going to curve how I feel about them. Like, and the thing is, the proof is in the pudding. How many of these kids who don't get to see their fathers are growing up to be royal fuck ups right now? One of Arnold Schwarzenegger kids is a royal. They was just laughing at that nigga kid. A couple years back, because he was the fat one that wasn't wearing Arnold Schwarzenegger, but then the one that was always with Arnold Schwarzenegger is in the gym and all that shit. And then he got the illegitimate kid that he don't see that's fucking up. Like we see the results. Fifty Cent son been going at him for. Uh, so you're gonna pick twigs out of the grass? No, what I'm saying is we know what the we all know the data on this. It's not picking tweets. We know what the data is for an absentee father or a man that's not there. We know the data. Yeah, but we can't sit here. We can't sit here and say just because the man who biologically birthed these kids, we can't say just because he's not there that hold on. We can't just say just because he's not there that they don't have a father figure in their life. So if I am rich, yeah, hold on real quick. If I'm rich and Shannon is my brother, and I say, Hey, look, bro, you ain't gotta work another day in your life. I'm better. I, I got. This whole year, I got projects day after day. I'm going to let you hold about two, three million. This I need you girl. to take care. Listen, I'm, a, I'm for the next two years, I'm going to need you to take these kids to basketball camp with your sons and pair them up, you know what I'm saying, and come get them. And I'll come get them every now and then. I believe, that, happens for rich people, I believe that is what's happening. And that information is not being disclosed to us because it's none of you our know fucking about business. Yeah, and the thing about it is, you got to understand, man, the way these women operate, these women are letting us know that they're willing to be down with us. If we can make ourselves powerful, if we can get to a point where we have power, we can associate that with a strength and, and a long bloodline. But we don't want to do that. We want to funnel all of our wealth through one family, which I think is unfair for a lot of women that's going to die without a man. So to, I'm, I'm on Kenny's side with this. Uh, that if you become a multi-millionaire, yes, yes, yes. real quick, Fred, you'll see thing and then hire other men. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. Oh, if you become a multi-millionaire, yeah. millionaire, yeah. well, it is there so much he's agreeing you with you. Spread your wealth. You should spread your wealth to your community. I, I'm telling. Like I said before, if I was a billionaire, I would marry as many sisters as I can and make and and, and create a, a a a dynasty. And and I think. I think the opposite is justified too. And I and I kind of understand why a lot of these women they they work on their themselves and they have children with NBA players that, and, and they bring in the royalties. Instead of having having children with a regular dude, these women are willing to have children. Multiple women are willing to have children with this one guy who has millions of dollars. They're letting us know that, hey, look, if you can, if you can become powerful where you can take care of kids. All of us will be uh, a wife or a concubine or whatever or a vessel so you'll run your bloodline through. They're so, telling us that. Darwin, Darwin, the main thing you said was, um, well, the main thing I, I got from it was you said I would marry as many women as possible, right? So if, if me, you saying that, I would assume that they would probably be living with you or would you have wives that live in multiple places? Yeah, I would. I, either one, either one, whatever is suitable for them to be able to raise my kids, um, maximum comfort. 
You know what I'm saying? And it ain't got to be necessarily be a wife. If I'm, if I'm, if they're willing to have my ch- children, so I can expand my bloodline, then thank you, it's appreciate so it. So you willing to be a goddamn pookie too? You ain't shit, well, I darling. Don't, I don't think you can associate a billionaire. I don't think you can associate a billionaire who has means Yo. to be able to take care of his children Bruh. on a level that this nobody in the world true. can to a pookie. This is so yeah, no, no. I, you, you're just a rich pookie, bro. When that's all you are, you're a rich goddamn pookie. If this is the case, then why do we talk so much shit about future in Sierra? Okay, watch this. If I was Nick Cannon uh, and I was on this panel, I would say to you too, I have my baby mothers under control. But if I were I'm supposed to give up my lifestyle and how I make my bread to appease you, the ideology of two men and their feelings. As well, for, 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 me, the for what the fuck you want to do? Me, do it for your goddamn son or your daughter. That's what you do it for. What are you doing it for me, for? I shouldn't, it shouldn't take me. No, 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 no. I posed right the man. question facetiously. If I was Nick Cannon, I'm saying, so you guys don't see how, my lifestyle is right. All my baby mothers are under my covering okay. and they run by my program. That means I have control. None of my kids want for nothing. But under you two guys' mm-hmm. ideologies and feelings, I'm supposed to give up my lifestyle. Who said it? Is fit how you that? see a, a proper man. Who said so financially, they, okay, financially, they may not want nothing, but emotionally, they probably need you and you're not available. So what what would y'all rather have? Generational wealth? Or have a father Ooh, spend time with have, you why can't and live I have, paycheck to paycheck the rest of your life? Why can't I just have two children? Because at, at 11, 12 years old, you're going to want to hang out with your friends. You ain't going to want to hang out with your father no more. You, get in, all you start becoming a teenager. You're going to say, fuck, man, just leave me alone. I want to go skate more with the dudes. Why are you at home when the lights come off? No. Bruiser, bruiser. Let him, at some let, point, these kids ain't going to want to tell you, Bruiser. bruiser. Go. Bruiser, that's not mutually exclusive. Like, I can have generational wealth and have kids in my house, and they grow them. Them T-line, hey, them babyless clippers. We talked about them clippers already, bro. Why do, I have to, why do I have to spread? Why do I have to spread my seed across the across the nation to do that? You saw where you why saw where five, you were about six, to say. seven, eight different women pregnant to do that. <clears throat> Sweeney, you, hard, hold on, hold on, this, this is why. This is why. So you can have a whole state named after your your last name, a whole oh, country oh, or shit. island ran by your family. <laughs> Come on, ain't that a bitch? Hey, you, let me tell you what you better do. You These better, the that you better tell your you better tell your wife to get her ass ready because I'm dropping a seed in her every every nine months. Soon as you pop one out, I'm popping one in your ass. Oh, what did he say? That's mad aggressive. What did he say? I, I was doing that, but goddamn, these kids start peeing on me and shit. I had to stop. That's <laughs> now, didn't you, Marcus? Mark said they, Mark said they start peeing on me. <laughs> like, come on, man. What do we? Come on, man. And, and to I, think, I think we all looking at it from the lenses of a person, the average a black man coming out of the hood, and we like, okay, these kids need a father. No, we're looking at it from a kid needs a father perspective. We ain't looking at it from an average man perspective. You're kids not looking at ads there, Sweeney. That goes without Bruce saying. Just what made a mean? point. You you're not okay, on my yeah, level, yeah. so you don't think, and that's not to be disrespectful. No, I to, the level to understand that a kid needs a there's levels to this thing. No, it's not. I don't need you. I don't need to know what it's like to be a billionaire to know that a kid needs his father. Well, you know, I think a father being there is always better than the one on FaceTime. I don't care how we try to slice this up. You're you're a nine to fiver. This goes back to what Shannon talked about the cash flow <laughs> quadrant. You're on this side. You're on the left side. Okay. Okay. You, okay. You, your money doesn't make money while you sleep. You don't know how to go out there and get it like they. Apparently, do. His, apparently Nick Cannon's don't either because his ass is always outside. No. That's his it's purpose, like, though. And, no, and the one thing purpose. about him, man, you ain't supposed to let nothing get in the way of your purpose, bro. A lot of mothers going broke when they stop working, and they millionaires. 
What are you talking about? What? Say that again? He's picking oh, twigs out of the grass again. He's picking oh, twigs oh, out of the grass. Oh, bro. Wait, Bruiser, let him say that. Say that again. I didn't hear you. I said a lot of motherfuckers are going broke when they stop working and they were millionaires. Where are you getting that stat? They can't almost suffer when he talk about them small hats. He had a bag, bend the knee and bag to him. Okay, Hank, I'm going to save you from yourself. He never had to work again after he talked about the He might not have. Eleven kids, they still want to eat. Shit. Okay, so why, Shannon. Why did, why did he go back? Why did he bend? Shannon, me? I'm gonna go to you. After yeah, why did he bend the me? issues with the uh, Jews, he did not hey, have Kenny. To work. Kenny, careful, careful with that because you know you get the yellow tag, man. Okay, you got to be careful about the groups with with uh, our other brothers, the uh, the Orthodox, the Hasids. So. After he did that, and he had to go sit down with Ario and all those people, he never had to work again. He's getting royalties, is he not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, big royalties. Oh, and and he got his radio spot. So he's you know he got his radio uh, show back. They took it. They snatched his radio show. They kicked him. Uh, uh, Wilding out was taken off out, out of MTV two, and they sat his butt down. And then he had to bring old boy on his show, have the conversation. He had to go to sensitivity Defamation training. League. Yeah. And then they gave him the radio show back. They gave he kept the the, the he kept the masters and the rights to uh Wild and Out. That's when he took it on tour. And they start cutting him a check to just to just chill and be cool. So he wasn't but losing the check, the check part, a lot of people don't know about. A lot of people don't know about that. Nick, so Nick is Nick is good in that in that regard. All because, but some people in the industry is like, yeah, but you bended the knee and you kissed the ring. Nick is like, I don't give a fuck. We all doing that anyway. So you know, it just depends on what angle you coming but, from and shit. But my ultimate point was that he still had to work. He still had to get up and like even when they took Wild and All off the air, what did he do? Which dope ass show? Because I seen him in no, Vegas. Queenie, oh, he does on, not right? have to work. Let me finish my point. Dope ass show, might I ask? Because we saw him in Vegas, but he had to get his ass up, and do go on a wild and out, and keep making that money. He still has to work, even when he, even when wild and out was taken off the air, he was still doing the. Uh, he went over there to start hosting on this show. Then he started having to. He had to do his own um podcast, and he was doing. He was still working. A lot of people. My whole point no. was a lot of people go broke, even millionaires when they stop working. Stop using a lot. Sweeney, don't I disagree. I, I don't. I don't agree That's with Nick Cannon's point. The grass. However, however, Nick Cannon, he didn't have to work. Some people just do what they do because they love it. If I won that billion dollar lottery today, I would continue to do what I do, not because I need money and I'm afraid to go broke. Because I know how to invest. I don't save, right? But I would still do it because I love what I'm doing. I love to contribute to the planet by doing what it is that I do. And I think that Nick Cannon. Just, just one of them guys. It's not about the wealth for him per se, because he wouldn't give out those type of contracts to his homeboys if he was greedy or worried about money. He, um, he takes care of a lot of people. I have to work again. The mistake What's word that? that you're using is nothing. Had. I have to work again. Nothing. There's no money that would make me stop. No, no, no. I mean, not it's, you personally, but like in general, how much money would a person need? To never or have to make to never have to work again. Wait, wait, you can't, oh, you wait, can't just say that like that. I'm asking Trev, bro. Chill out. Hmm. Uh five million. Five million, right? Mm -hmm. Are you saying for me or just a person oh, in general? It depends on your lifestyle. Because in general, in general, a person it depends on how they were living. If you were an no, NBA yeah, guy, yeah. you still have to travel private, you still gotta do different things. There's certain things yeah, that you just don't want to be you don't want to shop the same places. A regular yeah, ass person. Conversation moving. So just for the sake of argument, you know, just just for the conversation, in America, anywhere, five million. Okay, oh. now what, Sweeney? All right. So how many people do we know made five million over their lifetime and they're broke? I know. Well, who are you asking? I know a lot of quite people. a just, bit. Just public. quite a bit. Five now, million. Say, oh, that's I, what, I, MC MC Hammer. Fuck <laughs> a lot of people, man. We said a lot of millionaires <laughs> go broke, especially especially ball players. Right. I, when I said a lot, I didn't say all of them or even most of them. I just said there's a lot of people. A thousand could be a lot. A lot Why of would people. you use the most minuscule? How many ball players have been? How many millionaires make, exist? How many millionaires are in basketball? A lot. How many people play in the league, Shannon? 200. What are you talking about? Okay. It's 200 and how many, total. So, so 203, again, I think. So again, we've seen millionaires who made over five million dollars 
who technically would never have to work again, go broke. They so, blew it though. They didn't just go broke. They I, made bad decisions with it. The money. Yeah. But but, but that's that's still his point though. They they went broke. Point. However, they went broke. They went broke. Yeah, but you don't that's have to be point. in a league. You don't have to be in a league. You think make only five million broke after making five million dollars? You can be on it. Listen, you if, you, actresses, if actresses? you live to be, let's say you live to be seventy years old. Let's say you you retirement. You make you sixty thousand a year. That's enough for anybody to live on. For the 60 times 60, times 70, it gives you four million two hundred thousand. Okay. That Shannon's right. You only need about five million. If you work into retirement and you able to make thirty-five dollars an hour and you able to maintain that as a retirement, making sixty thousand a year, that's good. You ain't never gotta work a day in your life. And they don't got you ain't gotta make the million. You could just work to a point where you can retire at that rate. Five million give you, you more than granted that. you live at set, live I, I think that's a, seven I think years that's, old. That's a fair statement to make is that yes, if you looking at a lot of people, five million can get them from one end of life to the uh, to the other, right? And, and maybe not even that much, but but here's the but, thing that you're missing, Sweeney. Imagine wait, wait, wait. Ima listen, I'm gonna tell you what's so selfish about your point of view, and, and actually you shoot yourself in the foot. Go ahead. If let's just say you're imagine yourself being a billionaire, right? You marry one woman. You have a couple of kids, and you kill over. And your and your mind is to I don't know where your mind is at with that, but let's say she remarried. Guess who's getting your generational wealth? Another man seed. When you could, I, I personally I think it's selfish for a billionaire to only funnel all of that all of that royalty all of that wealth through one woman. When we have all these women in the world that's that's gonna go through life and not have, not have a uh, a chance at uh, having a a, a a a life with a man or even having kids, because we live in, in a lot of these countries, we live in a capitalist a capitalistic society. I think if you if you able to make up ninety percent or eighty percent of the wealth in, in a particular country and you funnel that through one woman, that's one one of the most selfish things you could ever do. <laughs> So, I'm in amazement. You said that they should redistribute it's a, it's wealth. A whole week for Bruce to sleep on what I said. Now he's a polygamist. <laughs> but but I, I think it's a level two becoming a polygamist. I don't think you can do that at a forty thousand dollars. Forty forty two. What is that minimum? Forty two five. I don't, I don't think you can do that at a man that makes forty thousand dollars a year as a polygamist. Person. I think he was referencing the exact person you're talking about. And then we're talking about we factor in multiple baby mothers and multiple women and all these kids. I don't think you can do that. At I think polygamy. I mean, I think you could do it, but I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it with you know in that situation. I don't so think I don't think it's for everybody. So, I think it's for so, a, a couple of years ago or a year ago, we we had a submarine lost in ocean. It was called Ocean Gate, where uh, people was just paying a quarter million dollars per seat to go down and take a look around the the uh, the Titanic. And the submarine was lost, it imploded. But on that submarine was a billionaire. The billionaire, and he brought his 19-year-old son. He's dead, and his son is dead, and he had a wife and a daughter. His lineage is gone. And I think what what I think what Darwin is trying to say, and what uh, I think Kenny is trying to say is, if you're a billionaire, do you guys understand the difference between a billion and a million? You know, a million seconds is two weeks. A billion seconds is 33 years. It's, it's That's the difference. Two weeks versus 33 years for one million versus one billion. You got a multi-billionaire who had just one son. And now they're both gone on a submarine. If the man would have built his lineage the way... King Solomon did, or whoever biblical persona you want to say that just had sons. If this billionaire had sons, he took his favorite or his youngest or one of his, the one that loves the ocean down and they die, but he got six more on, a, on land to continue the legacy, to run the company, to keep things going, to protect the women, protect the daughter, protect the mom, protect Wakanda. Is that so bad? I think that's all they're saying. And I don't think that that's necessarily bad. I get they are. Now, if you just a nigga that work as a forklift driver at Home Depot and you got six kids, that might be a problem. <laughs> 
But if you are a billionaire that's that's doing shit and is contributing to many lives, many families, many people, get, you you're employing thousands of people and keeping them fed and alive and, and, and functioning on planet Earth. Is it so bad that you are not that you're creating a legacy and a and a and a and an empire to keep shit going in case something like you die in a submarine? Why can't, he just, uh, why can't he just give his wife four boys, five girls, and keep it pushing? Why you I, have to spread it? You can just put spit that out. Weed every day. Damn, I bro, you tripping. I think our I grandmothers think, used to do it. I think you need to expand your POV. Our grandmothers used to do it. How many? How many brothers and sisters did your mama have? It's something in the water now, man. It's different. Yeah, it's oh, different. Oh, that, I'm, I'm all six. Yeah, my my grandmother had eleven yeah. children. I had something in the water, but back then they was able to do it. But now all of a sudden you gotta have you gotta spread your seed to 32 different women to have a bunch of kids. Come on, man. Like, Where you get 32? Why you do that number? I'm, I'm being over exaggerated. I'm over exaggerated. You know I'm being plus we, ain't had, plus we ain't had no fault divorce either. So, so just keep on going. Keep oh, on going. What is so the no it, fault divorce yeah. have to do with spread your seed? So if none of your children yeah, mothers house, are making cool. noise, they're kept. All your kids are kept and trust funds are put in each place and your kids have a chance of being aspirational and you're optimistic and this is your goal this is what i want you're playing out your life how you want you're running your race the way you want you could say i'm a clown from the outside he could come and buy your barbershop and just smash it and then you have to cut hair outside just because you said what do you say how much is he buying my barbershop for hmm? how much is he buying my barbershop for See, you buy my barbershop off me. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do with okay. it. <laughs> no, Sweeney, Sweeney, he got you in the corner because let me tell you, you said what? your grandmother had sixteen kids. Pause. I didn't say my grandmother had any. I didn't say nothing about. My okay, grandmother. so how many of your grand kids your grandmother had? Uh, shit. Let's see. On my hey, mama's side, let's just say sixteen. I don't give a damn. It's a lie. On my mama's side, my grandmother only had four daughters. Okay, so y'all have did she have any uh sons? No. Damn. Yeah, four daughters. Okay, so who who on the panel has a grandmother or somebody who had like a whole bunch of kids and had sons? Eleven. Eleven? Yeah. So would you rather would you rather would you rather I was at six? Would you rather your and your granddad was in that life, right? Mm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Until so, he, until he passed, but yeah. Would you rather your granddad would have been a multi-millionaire on television network. Or you'd rather it be how it is now. Because I, I think the difference would be you probably wouldn't be on this panel, right? If I was a um a If your grandfather was not in your, your daddy's life, in your uncle's life, and he was passing that wealth down to you, you probably wouldn't be on this panel. You would be on your way. Trevor being my, my outcome would have absolutely my outcome would have ab absolutely and I think that's, been different. And I, exactly. I think a lot of black families right now in 2024 would be totally different if we had a whole bunch of Nick Cannons back in the 40s and 50s passing out now, the wealth. Now, now, now here, now here's the thing, right? Is that is that what we value more? I'm um, not gonna say. What, my, I know my out my outcome would be different, but does that mean it would necessarily be better? Right? Um, it depends on what you value. Right. Because what I do value is, you know, getting together for fellowship on Sundays with my family. Right. W what I do value is knowing that my children can come to me and talk to me about anything uh, on demand, pretty much. Right. Uh, that That's what I value more. I value that more than a dollar. I value the principles that were given to us. I'm va I value the success that my siblings are having. Like everybody, everybody's doing something well on their own because we were given these qualities. I didn't exclude our, that. I, I included parents. those values because think about it. Those guys in the 40s and 50s bit the bullet and did what did the Nick Cannon way. Then I, obviously mm -hmm. me and you right now today would be able to spend 24 hours a day with our kids because of the generational wealth would go so far, we wouldn't have to work. And our kids wouldn't have to work. And the kids couldn't wouldn't have to work. So somebody would have had to take the ultimate sacrifice of being the pookie back in the 40s and 50s and show y'all the rich pookie. So that we will never have the work again and we can spend countless hours with our kids. 
And all of our, all of the money, all of the wealth we got will be coming from the guys, the Nick Cannons back in the forties and the fifties. Now, who's, who's going to teach us? Who's going to teach us how to manage that wealth? Right, that's part of it. If they don't teach us how to manage that wealth, it's not going to last a generation. So, no matter how you spend, so you're saying, it, so you're saying by by 2024, we, me and you, rich off of our our Nick Cannon dad back in the 40s, 50s, you don't think by this time we would have had enough knowledge to be able to manage the wealth? If we made it this far, the wealth has gone this far. Why to the 80s, baby? It's possible. It it's possible, but we don't know that far out to have. Okay, Bruce, I get what you're saying. Basically, you're saying that the wealthy man should be able to spread themselves and, and spread the wealth, right? I get what you're saying. I think that's the goal of a man who's making that much money and having that much kids is to, for his kids, 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 kids don't ever have to work. I'm not against that at all. I, I don't. I, I'm not against that. And and even if you say, okay, I wanted multiple women, I just what I my whole thing is to at least have them in close proximity, so you have direct access to your children. That's my only gripe. However you do it, that's fine. I have no disagreement with that. I just think that fathers should be in their children's lives, right, as much as possible. That's that's the only thing I, that I would say. If you say, all right, I need I mad chicks to do this, cool, go ahead. Just keep them in close proximity so you have direct access to your children. That's the only so thing I that would I would say. say. Nick Cannon is taking the ultimate sacrifice so his kids and his grandkids can be in their kids' life as much as they want. Trade-off and compromises. And most nobody's able to see that side of it, so we yeah. call them. A most of those situations, you, you, you can either take this or that. I have to be out here. I have to be on a jet. I have to be away from you from long periods of time. But here's what I'm assuring you, that you'll be financially well. Your grandkids, grandkids will be financially well. But I have to do this thing, and this is my purpose. Just know that you will be able to tell a story once you're grown enough and understand the, 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 well, my mind's a blank right now, the, uh, what I did for my family, what I sacrificed for my family, for the lineage would be told. Just like the old school, let's not overshadow that. I had a grandfather who did farming. He was a butcher in the islands and did this. He would leave early in the morning and come home late at night, rinse and repeat. But my grandmother never wanted for nothing. We have people in our families that, okay, Papa, you don't see him. You don't see him but much. You see the boots there. You see him leave early in the morning. He doesn't have a choice. So now, different because all the kids are in one household and not spread around. I think there's, a, there's always that trade-off. Okay, so I chose to have nine different kids, but I'm working a jet set lifestyle. But here's what I can assure. I'm not a deadbeat. I'm not giving that personal time like a nine to five dad would be able to give. But guess what? It's a trade off. My kids are never going to have to want for nothing. They'll have no nannies. They'll have the best education. The moms are to be kept. I, that's my it's always a balance. It's a, I, I believe in the balance. Right. So I, I, I can't disagree with that. But um, I don't want people to think that that's the only way that you can build generational wealth a lot of us know about money but we don't talk about money right like you know how many people build generational wealth just through a policy right by having the correct policy that they paid into and leaving generational wealth behind there's, there's so many different ways to do it with the money without breaking your back or causing uh um, right. like just missing out on your family altogether. There's, there's so many different ways to do that. It, it, it's just a balance, right? So you have to find what kind of balance that you're comfortable with. I do believe in the man going as hard as he possibly can, as hard as his body will allow us. That's our ultimate sacrifice, and a lot of us kill ourselves doing that. But we try to uh, at least give as much as we can while our children are young and they're impressionable ages. Once they're like 20 years old and all that, and you could call me up, you could video chat me or whatever. But for that, that time period when you decide – you you want to have children and those impressionable years they need you right from i'd say from zero to at least a good 16 right where you're like really in it really in it and you do what you got to do and before that do whatever you need to do as a man after that get right back to it but in that time period don't stop your hustle but you gotta i, I would suggest modify it a bit so you can have the children and the less children you have the easier it is but when you have more children 
<laughs> I would advise you to have them close to you. you. You know, one of the things I'm always advised by um, men like Shannon, Jr., uh, Bruiser, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of men that are that I look up to. Right. One of the main things they tell me, especially knowing that I'm a barber. Is they're trying to teach me ways for my money to make money for me. That way I can spend more time with my kids. JR was just telling me just just uh I think it might have been just on Sunday. He was like, Hey, look, you know, I know you like being behind that chair, but you know what I mean? You want to be able to put yourself in a position to where you don't have to be there all the time. That way you can go, I can go watch my daughter uh who's on the drill team. That way I can go watch my son who wants to be in a band now. Because right now, Saturdays, I work all day Saturday. So I value being there for my kids. So but like that's the advice I'm always given by men who make way more money than me. They say, make sure you try to find a way to get your money to make sure that you you put yourself in a position where you can be there for your kids. That you have more time for your family, because we see it a lot of the times. There's a lot of instances where kids don't see their fathers and they don't come out on the other side. OK. In a number of ways. It's not always that they come out the most fucked up kids where they come out and be degenerates but some of them do need, wind up needing therapy in the end because you weren't there some of them wind up suffering in school some of them wind up man i just needed my pops to holler at me because you know man i've been going through this with 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 this girl or some of them wind up having a ch child or some of them don't get along with their teachers or the mom is having trouble with them you know what i mean there's a lot of things that require us to be there but then when we absent we miss a lot of shit. So that's the position I'm coming from. I get what y'all are saying about spreading the seed thing and all of that, but I'm that's the reason why I'm trying to get my son to come home, uh, trying to move my son and get custody of my son. There's a reason for that. It's because I see the absence of me. Yeah, that's really important, man. Appreciate and it's going to work out for you, brother. It's going to work out for you. How old is your son that you're trying to get? He's 13. Oh, yeah. And now's the time to get him back. Oh, yeah. Let me get to these super chats real quick. Bob, O'Neill Nass says, never interrupt your opponent when they are destroying themselves. Really, you are correct about silence. Uh, Bob, again, for O'Neill Nass says, never date any woman that grew up or lives near a bad gas station. Now, for the BS 100, $2 says, hold the F up, Kenny P. From the callers. Laughing emoji. Not for the BS five dollars says majority of all men in America make 45k. 100. Majority of men on YouTube make six figures or more. Why y'all always lying? <laughs> lying the ass off. I don't think nobody ever talk about how much money they make. Yeah. I think no, people I just assume I that. I don't speak I have never that. said yeah. how much money uh, I made. Mean. Not us, but yeah. like there's a lot not of people close. <laughs> you reading the chat, bro. Yeah, Everybody that's not what we discuss. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Just make sure we support each other, man. Make sure we give everybody a follow and support whatever it is they have doing, what they have going on on YouTube and off YouTube. Um, so whatever you see them go live, just make sure you showing everybody the same amount of love and let's just be that for each other. Hit the like button. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Appreciate you guys' perspective today. And uh, that's, that's it, y'all. I really you good. And do well being. Go we'll get you some orange juice and some Nyquil or something, bro. Oh no, I'm feeling better, man. I'm on the up down. Is it is it allergies? I get the allergies, man. A little a little congestion. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, who, who's a greater man, Genghis Khan or Bill Gates? Well, you what? come out of <laughs> the one who's still alive. You the guy, you the guy I see in the supermarket. I pick up a pair. He was like, "What would Jesus do?" Like, oh. <laughs> no, Kenny, you you know like one third of all Asians have Genghis Khan blood in them because all the kids he had. Did you know that? I go to bed with that. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's all the asses over there jacked up now. That one kid rule. Now they over there suffering. Nah, they taking over the world. No, they That's what they doing. Hold on, I'm gonna tell me kids gang is kind of here. All right, y'all, man, we out of here. <laughs>